I would much prefer it be all McDonald's within 10 miles of a Krispy Kreme. We'll have that. Yeah. That yes. makes more sense. And I want there to be a dedicated person from Krispy Kreme <laughs> working in the McDonald's. And all that person does is the donuts. What a, what a preposterous thought that is. I love uh, that idea. Like the, he's, he's got like the paper hat on. Yeah. Imagine asking that guy where he works. And he's like, well, it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I work yeah, for you're Krispy not Kreme, this. but in a McDonald's. Welcome back to Macrodosing. What's up, party people? It is Thursday. It's March 28th. March 28th. Flying by. Good times. March badness. Everything we've got. Uh, we got Jeff D. Lowe on today's show. We're going to talk about Super Size Me and the fallout across the industry. I know Jeff's a big fan of, of the, the picture. He's a film guy. He is also the host of The Dozen. That is very, very unfair towards Macrodosing and their team. Mm -hmm. um, but besides awesome. that, he's also very fair to Brandon Walker, which I appreciate. Uh, but today's show is brought to you by the Rent app. Today, we've got something truly special for renters and landlords out there. Paying rent is something that we all have to do. And let's be honest, it can sometimes be a bit of a hassle. But what if there was a way to make it all easier, more straightforward, and even beneficial for your financial future? Introducing the Rent app. It's the ultimate tool for renters everywhere. The Rent app takes the hassle out of paying rent by depositing your payments directly into your landlord's bank account. No more trips to the ATM, no more mailing checks, no more managing balances in multiple apps, just simple direct transactions. It makes life easier for both you and your landlord. There are no fees, no weekly limits. That's right. The Rent app is completely free for you to use. No need for your landlord to create an account. It's completely free for them too. The Rent app is also about helping you build a brighter financial future by optionally reporting your on-time rent payments to the three major credit bureaus. The Rent app brings you one step closer to home ownership and it boosts your credit score. So why wait? Head to the App Store, download the Rent app today, follow Rent app at Rent app on Instagram and Twitter. And for our listeners, we have an exclusive deal. Go to rent.app slash barstool, get 50 bucks cash back on your first rent payment. If you're a landlord, go to rent.app slash landlord to get paid on time and also get paid without hassle. All right, we're back. Like I said, we're going to be talking about Super Size Me today. Uh, Jeff D. Lowe is visiting. He's, uh, he's dropping in from his green screen room. Which, um, Jeff, can you just drop your green screen real quick? Yeah. This is my favorite thing that Jeff oh, does. Actually, look at this. It's, it's leaning because it's not. I love that. Now you can key in whatever you want behind him. Oh, Jeff has a whiteboard bracket behind him. I love yeah. that. <laughs> look at that. I love that. Very cool. Used to be in the New York office. That's true. Yeah. So uh, Jeff's Yukon Huskies are uh, right now, they're in the uh, Sweet 16. They're playing Thursday night. Jeff, do you buy into the whole Danny Hurley the committee's out to get you because you guys absolutely. are absolutely he's my guy. Uh, I love Danny Hurley. Love everything he says. I'm getting on a flight. I, I will be in the air to Boston 24 hours. Uh, very excited. Love uh, that. So how are how are they fucking over UConn by having the game at, at 730? Just well, no, I mean, everything else is is what I is is what I believe in is that they were in a ridiculous region. The committee claims to use Ken Palm and all these metrics and they put all these like top teams in the same region. You got to beat everyone and they're defending champs. So whatever. But I mean, it's just ridiculous. They've had probably the easiest run of any of the top two seeds so far, including the sweet 16 game. Maybe I'd have to look at, I'd have to look at them, but like Auburn is in the region, Iowa state. Those are all, those were like three, it's like four of the top six Ken Palm teams were in the same region. That's crazy. Auburn lost and Iowa state can't score. Yeah. But that's what you got to beat everyone. So it's okay. It's fine. I mean, I mean, it is what it is. But I, I agree with with Danny Hurley. I ride with anything he says. I, I like that. You got to do that with your coach. Hundred percent. Smart man. Friend of part of my take. Yep. Piss Great drinker. Guy. Jersey guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm very near. It's this is the most I've ever wanted anything as a sports fan is them to go back to back. Never wanted anything more. You, That's insane. That is crazy. You've never wanted any. You've never wanted a Brown Super Bowl. Yeah. What the fuck, Jeff? In the moment. In the moment. Like I might say that next year. If the first of all. Well, you're let's, in the moment right now. Let's let's get to the moment where the Browns are even a a thing for the Super Bowl. Like let's 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 maybe go to the playoffs two years in a row. But the idea of going back to back, I've never it's it's a it's a captivating feeling as a sports fan. But in in like seven months, you're gonna say, well, yeah, I said that in the moment for UConn. That could be that could very well be the case. But 
back to back would be amazing. Only one team's done it in the last like however many. It's it's very hard to achieve in college basketball. It'd be fucking awesome. And so I've been to so many of their games too. That that's what also like. I mean, don't get me wrong. Brown Super will be unbelievable, but like I, that's not even a realistic thought in my head. So rank your rank your fandoms. What's number one? UConn. It's probably UConn, and it's the Browns and UConn are are. I would have an impossible time breaking that tie. But they're okay. all really close. Like I get very like, like I like when the Cavs won, like I cried. Like I that was an unbelievable. Um, th- I can tell you the team I hate the most is the Guardians. Okay. I love the Guardians. I I love all my teams. I hate the Guardians, <laughs> and I've I because they just the thing with the Browns is and the Cavs is that they they always try. Sure, is the owner of the Browns a criminal? Yes. But like they're trying to win football games. Like, like, did they trade for the nasty man? Yes. <laughs> but like they're trying to win. The Cavs. Let's don't is Dan refer Gilbert to James kind of a lunatic? Like that. Yes. But like Dan Gilbert <laughs> will will run someone over to win a title again. Like the 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 Guardians. Oh Jim my Beheim God. would too. Yeah. I heard Jeff liked them more when they were called the Indians, but that's the, true. That's the true. He doesn't like them as much. Yep, yeah, that is, that is 100% accurate. The, the, Jeff the has Guardians all they care about is making a quick buck. Like they they don't they don't. It's just disgusting. Is they made a comment a couple years ago when Lindor's in the trade? They're like, enjoy him while he's here. It's like that's the like fuck you. That's that's I don't yeah, want to hear that as a fan. They're that. also Dolans, and I know you don't like the Dolans. So common is ground. Is it the there. same family? Yeah, same family. Really? Yeah. So it's the Cardinal. There's a uh, there's a rumor out there that you have a Chief Wahoo tattoo on your ass. <laughs> I yeah I do I, I can't show it to you I don't want to get kicked off all the platforms. No, we're on Rumble. You can do it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, oh, he boosts the algorithm. That, that that man. I like all my like I am passionate and in the moment on all my teams. So like Penn State football would be amazing. Like I actually went there. Yeah. But that's not realistic. Penn State football. I mean, just make like I'm as down on James. Actually, Penn State football. I might hate as much as I hate the Guardians right now. James Franklin, used car salesman. Well, the the new playoff format's gonna be really good for him. Nobody, I have I have a friend, I have a friend who sent out a great tweet. My my good buddy Dan Smith, I went to Penn State with. He said, "There's no better coach in the country at making your school the number ten team in the country than James Franklin." That is true. Uh-huh. That this is playoff. That is, is the most true, him. accurate description of James Franklin I've ever heard. Yeah, this is gonna be money in the bank for him. He's gonna he's gonna make the postseason every year. I've talked to Rowan about it, fellow Penn Stater. It's the Penn State circle of suck. It'll be the same thing every every year. It's like. It's like, we have a chance. We made the playoff. We lost in the first round. Oh, maybe it's the same thing over and over again. Because now, he'll, they'll make the playoff almost every year. But it ain't going to go very far. It so. sounds like the uh, it sounds like Penn State is like the college equivalent of the Steelers. They won a, they've won a Super Bowl. They've won two in my lifetime. Yeah. They don't fire coaches ever. That's true. That's true. But you're just good enough to make the playoffs. I think I think you'll you'll talk yourself into Penn State this year because you will have that shot in the postseason. And I think a lot of teams are going to fall into that. Like they would it, it, in the making past the playoffs will be cool. With coach. Make, it would be cool. But I like I don't know. Like, I don't know if you agree with this big T. Like I wanted to make the four team playoff. Yeah, that would be nice. That was like I mean, yeah, I'm anti expanding the playoff in general, but like it is what it is. It, yeah, they're they're, hey, they're hey, expanding it before they even play the new pal, expanded. I'm I'm being dead dead serious right now. Enjoy making the twelve team one because it's gonna be thirty six in ten years. Yeah, which in that point it's not gonna mean it doesn't anything. mean anything at fourteen. They changed it. They went from four to twelve and twelve to fourteen without ever playing the twelve. <laughs> that is weird. That's very stupid. It, it will be at 36 in 10 years. I guarantee it. Also, Jeff, I, I could maybe use your help on this. I've been trying to think of what Blake's line of business is going to be. So Leroy, obviously very talented at, at breaking news. He, he had some big scoops. I think Blake might become a bracketologist for college football. I um I don't I don't hate Joe Lenardi. You want a conspiracy? Joe I Lenardi. Joe Lenardi. Joe Lenardi. So I when I won't say the guy's name, you could look it up. When I went to Penn State, I had a sports journalism professor, a very um, iconic sports writer, wrote for USA Today, all this stuff. He was would always do the mock selection committees every year for the NCAA tournament. Um, and in his sports journalism class, he would 
do a mock selection committee with us. And he always ranted about Joe Lenardi because when bracketology was becoming popular, St. Joe's was really good. And he works for St. Joe's. He worked or still works at St. Joe's. I forget what it is. It's one or the other. He has a class he, there on bracketology, I think. Right. So he was an employee at the, at St. Joe's. And this is when ESPN was doing bracket busters, which that's back when they would pit together the bubble teams and the mid majors against or the mid majors against each other and give them more pop on which clearly matters. Like, it very much matters. Like, people can tell you all they want that FAU wasn't ranked higher and didn't get a better seed because they made that Final Four, but they absolutely did. Like, that definitely plays a part. So he said, he's like, there is no reason to think that Joe Lenardi, when ever given the chance, would not put St. Joe's more on the right side of the bubble and more in his bracketology, and then they'd be on ESPN more, then they'd be popped up, propped up more. So if you want to add Joe Lenardi, he's he's crooked. It's crooked no, he Joe. is a fraud. He's a fraud. Crooked Joe Lenardi. He hates I like bracketology for for um for the dog though. That that'd be great. I mean, Lero is an iconic NFL mm -hmm. reporter. What about like exit polls for the election? Oh, he could be an exit poll guy, politics dog. I was just thinking bracketologist, but for college football, not basketball. <laughs> I like that. That's actually pretty good. I yeah, like that. because you can like project out, you know, like the eleven well, and twelve seed. Nobody knows. Well, the 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 women's game is so popular right now, and there's only one really one. It's like it's like Mike Cream or no, something. Charlie on, Cream. On, yeah, yeah. He could maybe maybe the dog could could body him out of that spot. Yeah, we'll see. We got to figure out a. a what lane if the dog just later. hated Rachel Maddow? That'd be kind of funny. Too. <laughs> <laughs> big team might big team might have to run that account. Yeah. Passed like, her on the way to work in New York one time. Worst day of my life. <laughs> but yeah, uh, long story short, Go Huskies, I'm also rooting for Big T. I, I'm a Rick Barnes guy. Rick Barnes fascinates me, so I am rooting Listen, for if I've been, I've been keeping a list of everything Jeff said about Pat Summit. if the national title game ends up being UConn, Tennessee. I have a list, <laughs> and it's years long. Yeah, years. How's her, how's her kid doing? I think he's doing well. I hope so. Hope they're hope they're happy and married or whatever they are. I believe they are. <laughs> I'm rooting for Tennessee too. I gotta say, uh, I'm not super confident, but I am rooting for Tennessee. That they can't play any worse than they did last week, and they won, which is nice. Exactly, won the game that they should have lost. Yep. So we need Dalton to make a few, a few three pointers in the first half would be nice. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, but let's get to Billy Sheep. Billy is joining us. Uh, Billy has formally announced his run for Congress. He's got a website up with all the facts that you can check out. And he's um, he's in the swamp right now. Billy's is, he's a swamp creature. Uh, but yeah, let's let's go to Billy's list that he sent over. Uh, first of all, right off the bat, uh, the Baltimore Bridge. So I made a mistake last night. I made a big mistake. I spent probably about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, just reading replies to tweets about mm -hmm. the Baltimore Bridge. I think we're dumber as a country than we've ever been in the history of our nation. I really do. I was shocked. I was shocked, even for the internet, in the words of uh of the Creed Thoughts blog. In the even for the internet, it was uh Dark. It, it was stunning all the different theories people were putting out there right off the bat. Right I, I knew that there would be, you know, some conspiracies. I knew that there would be um like a demolition conspiracy, for example. Uh and I, I was Sad to say, I found that within about five seconds of looking for it. Some of the uh, some of the sparks that came out of the bridge when it collapsed, people were like, look, that's thermite. It's controlled explosion. It's just like World Trade Center all over again. People not realizing that, like, electrical lines run across a bridge to provide power to the lights and to the bridge itself. Uh, it was it that did not surprise me as much as some of the other stuff. Uh, a lot of people drawing parallels between the bridge collapsing and Diddy. Uh, having his house raided and flying out of the country to Antigua or wherever he's at. I, I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe I'm just not following it. Why, how are those two things connected? Are they saying that the bridge collapsing was a distraction to distract us from Diddy? I mean, Insane. basically, I, I think there's zero correlation there, but uh, with the, uh, frequency that that bridge is passed by cargo ships like something like this occurring at some point kind of statistically makes sense it's quite a large port i think the port serve like uh services both baltimore but other ports in the dmv so the fact that uh a cargo ship finally hit the bridge after some sort of malfunction statistically is like 
possible. It's not statistically like out of this world. Yeah, so, the, people are pointing to the the boat losing power, regaining power, and then steering into what like it looked like it steered directly into the stanchion or the uh, the support beam that was going down to the water. And then there would be people being like, "Yeah, this was taken over by hackers. This was taken over by Russia." A lot of stuff right off the bat from people. And then in all the replies, you would see actual uh, like ship experts pointing out, okay, here's what happened. Here's how it steered. And then people being like, no, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Everyone just, anytime there's like a big disaster, people become an expert on whatever subject matter that is within about 30 seconds. And then it's always funny to see the real experts dunking on them and then watching the comebacks from the people that are, are convinced. The, the, uh, pilings didn't have bumpers and that's something you notice on a lot of bridges and waterways is that they have these large bumpers, like a sort of dock like structure, almost like when you're, uh, like a, a, a road is diverging and there's an exit in that like side of the road that's in the middle has those like, uh, for lack of a better term, barrels that are orange that sort of serve as like a, a, a crush zone. If someone was to run into that road split usually a lot of those types of bridges have that same type of piling pile up to ensure that it sort of stops it before it hits the structure. This bridge did not. No, uh, and it was a massive ship too. Yeah. It was a huge ship. What we really need to talk about is we have these shipping companies, multinational shipping companies, and they've been using our waterways and we need to make sure that they're responsibly maintaining their ship's technology. And this isn't the first time this ship had, uh, problems there's videos of it like across the world like crashing into a port in singapore uh, i'm pretty sure but that's what really needs to be looked into like the maintenance of these ships like we see it uh, uh domestically with boeing uh you know boeing's not hitting its safety standards and their guy ends up dead you know their whistleblower ends up dead that's more of a story than what happened here you know could russia be trying to uh hijack like ships without maintenance to take down our infrastructure there would be too much evidence of it like for example they're gonna be looking through the wreckage right now and they'll have to have found some sort of device someone on that boat who would have like shut off both generators backup generator uh to ensure that it would you know steer the right way and hit it seems a little unlikely but not impossible if Russia was hypothetically trying to get back at the United States for, you know, an involvement in the uh, concert terror attack, which we probably had nothing to do with and was total false flag by Russia. But going we've seen, forward, we've seen uh, live free or die hard. That movie, yeah. scare, that movie scares me where they just take over like all the infrastructure. They hack into everything. I mean, uh, leave the world behind. Jeff, I don't know if you watched that. I did. It's that that is realistically how something could happen in this country that tears us apart without, you know, having to use nuclear weapons in a large scale World War Three scenario. That was another one. There were uh, there were people saying that Obama did it, that he drove the boat into the bridge because in Leave the World Behind, which he produced, there's a there's like one scene where a boat runs ashore. Yeah. And the most know, common the most common theories I saw one Obama did it. Uh, let's, not let's not discount that yet. We're going to wait till all the facts come out. Um, number two, it had something to do with a distraction from Puff Daddy uh, getting his house raided. And then that made them want to like cover up whatever's happening with him. So the CIA steered a boat into a bridge. That was two. And then uh, the third one that I saw a lot of is that Billy did it, that Billy was responsible for it. So um, I think I just started that one right now. But <laughs> did he okay. having a, a distraction vessel that always floats the water would be quite an unbelievable reveal. Let's go. Yeah, you guys laughed at me when I told you that one day we would have to do this. But guess what? The time is now. A lot of people also pointing the symbolism of it crashing into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. It, it's also fascinating to see people across like the United States realize what bridge it was and then realize who Francis Scott Key was. And then they say, oh, well, this is this can't be a coincidence. I think actually it was a banner day yesterday and people saying just like writing coincidences down and then saying this can't be a coincidence. I also I've recently got into uh, the stock market and trading. And so I, I read various forums, including obviously Wall Street bets. And 
it was a, a clear use of an excuse for people who lost money yesterday, like on stocks that have nothing to do with it. They're like, oh, man, my calls in NVIDIA are gone. That must be because of the Baltimore bridge collapse. Like, well, ah, like, I think you just made a bad trade. <laughs> no, supply chain stuff is oh, for sure impacted. But everyone was like, like Krispy Kreme went like dropped after a big spike. It's like, ah, I think. Oh, okay. Krispy that Kreme is, yeah. dropped. <laughs> well, there is going to be huge impact on Eastern seaboard shipping. I mean, uh, I think most of all ships that were going into that harbor are now going to be going into a harbor in Virginia that is much closer in proximity to DC. There is like part of the conspiracy, and we'll just flush it out for those of you who don't uh, live on the internet, that this was strategically to overcrowd a port in Virginia that has is quite close in proximity to DC to overwhelm their security apparatus there and customs so that uh, an unchecked container could bring in a dirty bomb or bad actors into the country to get to our nation cap our nation's capital. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it'd be easier to just try to do that anyways than it would be to like steer a ship into a bridge. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I guess, I guess we're going to find out more about what happened, but it looks like uh, the power went on that ship a couple times. And uh, that I'll tell you what, as a person who's always been afraid of bridges, this did not do me any favors. Like bridges terrify me. I'm so scared of them. I don't know why. I always have been. Just giant structures in general. A little scary. A little dicey to me. And this uh watching that yesterday morning, it was horrible. It was like one of your worst fears seeing like an entire bridge fall into the ocean. But uh I think it could have been a lot worse. They shut down the traffic. Yeah. The, the ship shout out the radio. police officer. Yeah, shout out. I, I guess a boat captain was able to get in the call. Then the uh, police communicated that. Then the, the construction crews helped to shut down traffic too. So, um, yeah, it could have been a lot, lot worse. But um, great day for the internet yesterday. Good job, everybody. Uh, Andrew Tate was the first person that I saw that weighed in on it, actually. <laughs> I found the news well, out from Andrew Tate. Well, and... he had the, the time change difference. Also, yeah. shout out the Baltimore mayor. He definitely got out of bed at – because it was a crazy time at night and everyone was just roasting him for like not looking professional while he had to give a speech on the thing. But like, he literally got dragged out of bed probably at 3 AM when it happened. Like, come on. He, he was on the scene. That's not all politics. Politicians are regular people too. Yeah. Just because he isn't your picture of a politician doesn't mean that he's not doing what's right. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was a very, very scary thing to see. Are you, Billy, was that a pat on your own back? <laughs> no, dude. I just, he was getting cute. Everyone's been like, this is the Baltimore city mayor. And it's like, that's just a representative of the people who elected him. Like, come on. That's yeah. what politics should be about. Um, it was, it was, it was a very, very strange piece of news to wake up to yesterday. And uh, I guess, I don't know how long a boat investigation is going to take, but we'll probably a lot of wreckage out. to get through more and more yeah i don't even know how they're gonna like get down there and find I mean, it, that shit. it is nuts to just think of the absolute force and weight of the actual collision because you're seeing like shipment containers looking like tin foil like ripped up like tin cans like your buddy ripping like biting into a beer can at a barbecue or like Matthew McConaughey and True Detective just cutting his Lone Star beers into weird thing. That is what those shipping containers look like. Yeah, I have, Are, I have a question about that. Uh -huh. Will so the the captain of that ship, I guess, is who it would be. Is he gonna get charged with like murder? Uh, I don't know. It could just. It's probably more likely that the people that were in charge of the maintenance on that ship, because if they had like a catastrophic power outage. Right. Then it's not his fault, and he tried to he tried to fix it. Because I saw something that they think it was like the okay the power went out and then he the anchors dropped and that's what caused it to go. Was into the, the ship called the Jalal? It was called the I think the Dolly. Oh, the or, Dolly. I saw Dolly on the side of. I don't know what the name of the ship was, but yeah. So the but Dolly, like, yeah, like the Dolly he, ship has crashed in other ports before. But like I was just I was like I was thinking about. I mean, the guilt that that man yeah. must, I mean, that I can't even. So I'm imagine. not, I'm not a ship expert, um, but I, I have seen a lot of people who are ship experts talk about what he did and how he was turning the rudder to steer away, mm -hmm. but the power went out. And then when the power came on, the rudder was already in a place um, that was going to make the 
boat overcorrect, and then when they dropped the anchor uh, to try to slow down, they were already too close, and it dragged the ship. The anchor made the ship turn after it was dropped. Yeah. So there's just a lot of stuff that they're trying to do to try to avoid uh, a collision, it sounds like. And then um, because the power kept cutting in and out, the ship was put in some positions that it normally would not have been in. Right, because then it's also like <clears throat> like murder or, I mean, you know, whatever. But then also like, what do you get? Yeah. Again, if they get criminally charged, I don't know. But like, what do you get criminally charged for if you just collapse a massive bridge? Like, If it's negligence, you would probably get murder. Okay. Well, it's going to fall on the company. So it turns out in 2016, the Dolly collided with the berth at the container terminal in the port of Antwerp, Belgium. So we need to figure out some multinational regulation of these ships because this kind of stuff can't happen again. Yeah, I think global shipping is just such a competitive business that they all cut corners to try to save costs. So mm. if there's any like sort of safety regulation, they can skirt by or figure out a way around. They probably all do that. That's so fucking sad. But yeah. I mean, if you think about it, like how many cargo ships are traveling every day in the United States in and out of ports, that this is the first major issue that we're seeing, right? We would all oh, no, no. Remember, remember well, not, the, uh, not the, the- It was in March. Suez Canal. Yes, yeah, Suez Canal. I think that was in March Madness too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like, uh, it was, yeah. they, they said it was like two years ago last week or something. Yeah, yeah. I remember that the dude- Got uh, about that. He, he huh. just- got the ship stuck in the Suez Canal and then global shipping came to like an absolute a standstill. Screeching that was a much funnier ship incident yeah. than this yeah. one. I well, would bring those back. The fellas, when they get got the ship out celebrating, that was, that was dope. Yeah. They brought out like one, uh, one like backhoe to try to dig yeah. it out and it was so tiny and it was so sad. Uh, but yeah. When they got it out. Yeah, let's bring back let's bring back the uh, the funny ship incidents and mishaps. I don't I don't want to see anybody lose their lives. I just want a guy having like the worst possible day <laughs> that he could ever have on his job and and grinding inter or uh, international commerce to a halt. Yeah. Uh, all right. So some much more lighthearted stuff right off the bat. Um, also on Billy's sheet, there's a quote from Mike Trout a couple years ago that has shed some doubt on Shohei Otani's explanation of the gambling incident. So Shohei has been saying that he doesn't understand English, that he doesn't speak English. And so he was able to get the wool pull, pulled over his eyes by his interpreter. And he was unaware of what his interpreter was claiming that he did until uh, after his interpreter addressed the Dodgers. And then Shohei had some questions uh, that didn't add up to what he thought was going on. And part of the big explanation was he didn't he didn't speak English, so he didn't know what his interpreter was telling people all the time. Um, but there's a quote from Mike Trout in 2021. It's from Fabian Ardea. He says, I asked Mike Trout if there's anything Shohei Otani is not good at. And Mike Trout said, I would say English, but he's mastered that. So kind of saying that Shohei does speak English. This whole thing stinks, man. This whole thing is, I don't, I don't know what Major League Baseball is going to do. I... I tend to think that there's a lot that we haven't been told about what's going on because the simple act of transferring over four and a half million dollars from your account, if you're Shohei, you have they they make an effort to get in touch with you if you're transferring that much money over. Whether it's like a verification text that's sent to your phone or an email that you have to respond to or a phone call that you have to pick up and give a, a piece of information about yourself. If you're sending four and a half million dollars, it's not like you log on to your banking website and click transfer. And then that's the end of that. So I don't, I I don't think I believe Shohei. His statement was very pointed, though, to the fact that to the point that he said stuff that he could be held criminally liable for if he's just lying. Yeah. What did he say? I mean, he said straight up, "This guy stole from me. I had no idea this, that, and the other." You yeah. can't you can't just say that if it's not true. Well, he he also said that they're cooperating with all the authorities, but then I think ESPN did a follow up on that and they reached out to all the authorities that would be investigating investigating this as a crime and none of them had an active investigation against Ipe yet. I still think it's very odd but like he didn't say we're waiting for all the facts to come out this that he said this guy stole from me. Yeah. I also don't know what the MLB would even do like say it becomes a Pete Rose situation which it's not right now but like the M MLB is in such a weird spot too where like they are constantly trying to i mean he is a face of the game and he's a global face of the game like do they want to mess with that yeah um, 
or do they do they turn their you know they turn their head a little bit there if it becomes something that it is like in the realm of rose my theory is that they just reinstate pete rose and then they're like well going off our new standards then shohei uh he'll only be suspended for like a couple weeks God, Pete Rose would, would hate that, secretly hate that. <laughs> to only get reinstated because... No, just to be... I think just to be reinstated in general. Oh, I think he wants to get in the Hall of Fame. Maybe. His whole brand is not being in the Hall of Fame, though. That is like, true. Once he's, he's like, w- don't, would you not... Like, once he's in, he's like, that's kind of it, right? If he He's like was, a bad boy. Yeah. What pers- if he was never implicated in any of that, put in the Hall of Fame first ballot, what percentage of people that currently know... Uh, like all about Pete Rose would know about him. I think it's significantly less. I think yeah. use use my yeah. use my other show as an example. Use the dozen. Think about how many older questions people don't know, just solely based on the fact that that person's relevancy is past. Like, like yeah, Pete Rose is a fucking legend. Don't get me wrong, but like, I I would agree with Big T. It's like I think I think a lot of I think less people would know. And if he does those signings ba- too, right? Like he, you know, yeah, he got a new book coming out. If he was a first ballot Hall of Famer and you asked a casual baseball fan like who the all time hits leader is, they wouldn't get it. I casual, I, I think a casual might know. I think he's helped but, tremendously. But I, I think more people worldwide definitely know him as the gambling guy. Yeah, I was gonna say I yeah. am a I'm a casual, and I really only know him from. Fun gambling. fact: uh, he he wanted to be on part of my take, and I think he uh, he requested that we pay him like five thousand dollars. <laughs> see that? See that thing? That that yeah. just seals it right there. Like that's it. That confirms it for me. <laughs> yeah, he just he just wanted the money to gamble with. <laughs> he wanted to go yeah. to the racetrack that day, and so he's like, "Yeah, five grand. I'll do an interview. I'll take I'll take it in chips. Um, yeah. I'll take it in anything." <laughs> yeah, he he loves to gamble. Absolutely loves it. Um, what do you guys think about Diddy? What's going on with Diddy? I want to hear some Diddy. spicy take because I don't really know. All I know about Diddy is that uh, he's been rumored to be a sex pest for quite a while. And they finally, uh, they finally raided his house, and it looked like his kids were home, and they got put in handcuffs. Diddy was gone. He was like on the tarmac going to Antigua or something. They blocked his flight. Oh, so where is Diddy right now? Uh, I don't know his exact location right now. Was but he blocked? Was he blocked in Florida? Somewhere in Florida? I, I think, think they blocked his flight. Yeah. Well, and then his his drug mule got arrested, which I Who's he went to Syracuse. He went to a player. high school right by me. He's from Cleveland. Oh, MGK he's from like a rich. He's from like a rich suburb in Cleveland. Yeah, so so what is going on with Diddy right now? Dude, Prince Harry's involved, another royal in a weird sex ring. So, you know, there could be a serious correlation between Epstein and P. Diddy through the royal family. And I know that sounds crazy. But what did, what did Harry do? Harry was he's been named in a lot of the uh lawsuits. And apparently P. Diddy also had a whole house hooked up with surveillance equipment, much like Epstein did in his Upper East Side apartments, where he basically could videotape uh, ex- uh, music executives, other musicians, all sorts of people in compromising situations with underage people. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't and sound good. Now my Justin Bieber take when I was like, hey, you know, what the hell happened in Justin Bieber and Diddy's 48 hours together where Justin started avoiding him after that. Like what happened? I'm just saying, like we heard this stuff with Nickelodeon, uh, uh, silent on set. Is that what it's called? Like quiet on set, quiet on set. Like this, this might go deeper. I think anybody that takes, no, I don't want to say anybody, but there's a lot of examples of people that have taken like managerial roles for young talent that ended up just being the biggest creeps. The dude that started uh Backstreet Boys in sync, Lou Pearlman, that guy, anyone that's affiliated with the Disney channel pretty much um, has had uh, some, some very disturbing accusations and Diddy uh, between like his girlfriends and his wives that have accused him of like kidnapping and rape. And he blew up kid Cuddy's car. Apparently I feel like yeah. that, that, that story would have been massive if it came out in the nineties or early two thousands. But because the news cycle moves so fast, we spent like six hours talking about the fact that Diddy blew up kid Cuddy's car. I mean, it's pretty wild. And also it came out that he probably did order the hit on Tupac. What is that? Jim Moore now. Jim Moore. Yep. 
Yeah. So And that's because of P. Diddy's son going to USC? Yeah, so so UCLA. UCLA Diddy, man. Diddy is where right now? Is he in Florida? I thought he was in Antigua or where. I, I, I thought, thought he was too. I thought he was somewhere with no extradition, which I think was Granada. Let me look it up. I heard Antigua, but his flight got stopped in Florida. I don't know about that. The only thing I know I, I could be wrong on that. Is. It could be it could be in the Caribbean. Antigua, yeah. Antigua. It's yeah. definitely somewhere where people hide money offshore. You remember that show Cribs back in the day? And they used to they, they would just go to islands, just like billionaires' islands that they had in the in the Caribbean. I remember one time they did a Cribs, I think it was on Richard Bronson and his island. And uh Bronson. And they had they went to the guest house, which was also a mansion. And then he was just showing off his guest house and Mariah Carey was just hanging out there. Like, oh hey, I'm just here for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, Richard Branson's so rich that his cribs just has a Mariah Carey house in it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um I just saw that weird video of uh the two videos with Justin Bieber. Did yeah. You, did you see those? So bizarre. No. So there's one where it's Diddy and him when Bieber was yeah. like fifteen and he was yeah. like yeah, we're going to hang out for like 48 hours, do like all sorts of cool shit that 15-year-olds love to do. And then there's another video like a couple years later and Diddy's like, "Why don't you ever call me to hang out anymore, man? Like we never we never hang out." And then <laughs> Bieber's like, "Oh, yeah, like I changed my number." Mm. And he's like, "Do you, uh, yeah." Yeah, I I've been t- remember when I brought this up like weeks ago on the show and everyone's like, "Oh, you're being crazy." But like, dude, there's he just got raided and he's got a weird sex ring going on. Yeah, I think uh, if anything, maybe this will shed some light on the fact that Diddy was an absolutely atrocious rapper that should never have become famous for being a rapper. He was like a, always kind of like a predatory guy that would befriend talented individuals and then he'd make them give him like a track on one of their hit songs. I'd be like, why the fuck is Diddy rapping? Like, he's the manager. He shouldn't be doing any of that shit. He's a terrible rapper. I was Wasn't thinking yesterday, like, obviously I know who this guy is. Very famous. I don't think I know a P. Diddy song. Yeah, he was a uh, he was a producer and a, and a manager. But um, so if you go back to like the Bad Boy era back in New York, like a lot of Biggie song, Mo Money Mo Problems, has a, a Diddy verse on it. Um, anything with Mace has one. He did that song I'll Be Missing You after after Big died. Is he the main guy on that? I think he's the main. It's, I'll it, be missing you is just him. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Puff Daddy and Faith Evans. I think. I need a girl. Yeah, he's, he's just not a good rapper. Never been a good musician, really. But he knows how to work the uh, the industry. I'm coming home. Diddy Dirty Money was was kind of good. Bad Boy for Life. Yeah, I think a lot of those are just they're good songs, and then Diddy makes them worse whenever he starts to rap. All right, Billy, what else you want to talk about from your sheet? Um, we got. So women are just getting sucker punched in New York City. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like it's the situation's out of control in New York. There's like been a multitude of just egregious crimes occurring: cops getting shot, squatters killing uh, residents of homes. It's totally it, safe though. It's literally Arkham Asylum. Like we're it's gotten out of way out of control. So is the uh, the squatter thing? I read about that last week. So. Uh, there's can, a um that's there, my classmate's mom oh really there's yeah. there's uh like a, a huge community of squatters that like teach each other their tricks the adverse possession people and um there's also a lot of like off the grid people down in texas that live this way too where they find out ways to take control of people's houses and um through adverse possession they just claim that they live there now they're just squatters they don't buy the house they just show up and then through all these like weird legal maneuvers that they well, try to pull, they claim that they have possession. And it's in a lot of places, it's very hard to kick somebody out if they like go by all these weird legal steps. Well, they claim to be tenants of the building. Uh, I, in the case that we're talking about earlier, but like in a random case, they'll show up, they'll squat in a house and be like, oh yeah, no, we paid, we have a lease with them. Like the landlord has the lease. I signed it and gave it to the landlord. They have the landlords like this lease doesn't exist. And the government's like, well, we have to give, you know, renters rights. Like you need to give uh, a certified message. And then they have 30 days after that date to be evicted. Um, and then the civil, by the time the civil court stuff is getting going, it's all been done. They've stayed there for 
however many months and then they just either move on or you know it's a ridiculous situation that's been allowed by crazy laws that are just sort of illegal that should have never became law like they were well-meaning laws that now have just had so many loopholes that people are just fully taking advantage of what's going on so yeah there was a um a a couple people that we're living in this apartment in Kipps Bay in New York. And then the landlord came over to try to clean the place up. No, and, no, this is they- what actually happened is so basically this apartment uh, was owned by the grandmother and the grandmother had recently passed away. And they're now looking into the, how the grandmother passed away. It was then occupied by individuals during the time where the family was mourning. Uh, it was then occupied by individuals uh, and then when going to clean out the apartment, uh, the daughter of the grandmother was then accosted, killed, shoved in a, uh, a duffel bag. And then everyone was looking for her and they found her in a duffel bag three days later. And it's like the worst story ever. And it was a 19 and 18 year old in the apartment who escaped to Pennsylvania. Did they and catch them? They, they finally caught them, but it... <laughs> It's ridiculous. And I think they were both previous offenders on crimes that they should have been put away for. So in we had like a 20 offender individual kill a police officer recently. Um, and it's absolutely out of control. I can't believe that this is what we're accepting as reality in, in especially New York. Like we're, it's ridiculous. And it's honestly so frustrating to see a city that I grew up in and around that has just turned to this absolute crapshoot where this is happening. So with, with the TikTokers, is this, is this a real thing that's yes. happening? Is this a real trend? How many people have been punched? I saw- all around Washington Square Park, the, there's a, a, an area down there and they all occurred within about a 10 block radius. I, um, I have seen about nine in the past two days on my feed and then i've seen a couple where it's like not that they got punched in the past two days but they were like this happened to me last month or a couple the chaotic area too that's like like they got that weird like circular area that like drops down into like the subway and just like it's just a really yeah busy area it's from like washington square park up to like kind of like chelsea area because the first girl who kfc made a one minute man about hallie she I think was in like the Chelsea area. I think she was right by the New York office, honestly. And then it was like people kind of put together. That was kind of all the way down to Washington square park, but it's like happening in broad daylight. And it's, it's seemingly, it seems like it's the same guy. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's all of these girls are getting punched in the same place. Like it's all on their like temples and they're all, just walking like minding their own business like it it seems to be a pattern that every girl has the same story and it's all in the same area um it's crazy and i used to like that's the area i lived in when i was in new york and i'm like i would have been terrified to like go outside and just be like well head on a swivel like you just i don't even know what you do in that situation like i don't know how you avoid that so when they get punched like were the cops called they, uh, a lot of the girls that I've seen the videos of have made police reports about it um, and, if, like, given descriptions. But I don't think they've sh- – I from I haven't seen one where the girls gave descriptions on TikTok about who the guy was, but I have heard st- several of them say, I made a police report. So if it's in this area – I used to walk through this area all the time. It was close to my apartment. So I would, I would walk to work sometimes, sometimes in the Washington Square Park area, mm-hmm. sometimes up through Chelsea also. If it's in broad daylight in those areas – those are crowded areas. They're crowded. It's like, like up is, Fifth Avenue and like Seventh Avenue. Like I don't know how you're just getting away with that so easily. Yeah, and well, it sucks that it's. It sounds like there's not like the these poor women are getting like absolutely whopped in the face, and then it doesn't sound like a lot of people are like doing anything yeah, about it around yeah. them. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, weird. But they're getting targeted from what I've heard. It's individuals walking. They're on their, on their phone, phone looking yeah. down. Then some guy says, oh, excuse me. And then they look and up for a second and then just get punches them. sucker punched. I mean, the knockout game was a thing a long time ago and it's still occurring. 
but you know, it's like, was the knockout game. So how real was the knockout game? Because I've I've heard what's the knockout. Game? Well, didn't yeah. they get that actor who was in Ghostbusters with the knockout game, and he was hospitalized in a coma? So it's it's one thing to say that they're assaults. It's another to say Rick like, Moranis. Yeah, Rick Moranis yeah. got knocked out in broad daylight, and I think he literally like got put in a coma. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. But uh, again, like I don't know if that like if people are doing it because of a trend called the knockout game. Well, well or whatever it was, it was occurring. Yeah, because there's a criminal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's just New York has always had crime, but we've had a like before COVID like has been probably some of the best year, like lowest crime rate in New York's history. And now it's just gone to absolute chaos. And I mean, I know the cop who caught the queen stabber, who is just this dude running around stabbing people. I mean, it literally sounds like Arkham, like Gotham City. And it, it is out of control and something needs to be done. And the DAs are preoccupied with, you know, high level financial crimes, but not prosecuting anyone who's actually a danger on the street. It's just it's just like really scary that it just can happen to you in broad daylight and it doesn't seem like anyone around. And you no is- one's giving me the smoke. That's what's annoying. Punch Billy. <laughs> Punch Billy. Yeah, go ahead. Give me Billy, the smoke. Guys. Yo, Billy, you want to be? You, you, you're saying this is like Gotham. You need to become Batman. <laughs> Billy, need, Billy needs to put on a wig, wear like a a, a stuffed bra, Dude, I've, a real I'm, short skirt, and walk around Chelsea on your phone mm-hmm. with your head down, mm-hmm. and then wait for some dude to try. I would love to see them try you, I, Billy. Yeah. yeah, dude. I mean, these hands—they're expired, but they were they were legal once. We should do that, Billy. You should you should try to yeah, step in there and I'm be a vigilant. Leg- I'm legally trying to do as much as I can to help the situation currently. <laughs> Bill just, for Congress.com. Okay. It just it it I feel bad for all of them. That sucks. It, I'm I am very glad that I'm not in New York right now as a as a woman. Yeah, so these all took place in the last couple of weeks. And the past so. like two like days. Forty eight hours. Forty eight hours. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a f- then they should be able to catch the guy with all the cameras that we have there. And I would think that somebody would call the cops if like there's hundreds they're, and hundreds of people on those streets. They're being told to stand down literally with small crimes. I was in a CVS Who's getting told. I, I, I'm pretty sure that if somebody's punching women on the street and you call a cop, and you're like, hey, they're not like this person's st- punching women on the street. They're going to arrest them. Yeah. Yeah. They are certain calls are not getting responded to. I was at a CVS, which is now closing. Uh, near where I live and I was uh, getting some Gatorade. Um, I I literally was just, I came back from uh, campaigning all day and I was needed a Gatorade because I was dehydrated as fuck. This dude runs in, he sort of opens the door next to me, like kind of aggressively. And I'm just sort of like, all right, what's going on here? And he just starts shoving Gatorades into his pants. And so much so his pants just dropped to the floor and I'm like, oh my God. And he literally cleared out all the Gatorades by shoving them in his pants and then pulled his pants up and then walked out of the store. And then the manager's just like, ah, not again. Calls the police and the police. And she goes, yeah, they're not responding again. Like, yeah. But I think, I think that's also different that's from way different. A guy right? that's, but like, assault, yeah. there are, there are, it's a concerted effort there, like, to not respond to certain crimes because it's not worth it. Like, because the, they won't get convictions. There's no point. Right, but again, that's different from if you call the cops on somebody that's punching women in the face, I'm sure the cops will show up. Right. Yeah. But like the I mean, I think it's happening on the on the subway all the time and their their the response, like there's a reason why Hockle brought the National Guard into the subway. It's because the situation is totally out of control. That's the crazy part is that like everyone says in New York, or you know, be aware of your surroundings on the subway. Like I would always, you know, stand behind the poles. You know, you take precautions in the subway. Broad daylight, just like down Seventh Avenue on a Monday afternoon, is like you don't think that's the most dangerous place. Yeah. Like, it's just so crazy. And like the the TikTok, the goose eggs that these poor girls are getting. I mean, 
it's just it it's 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 ridiculous. They're, they're, they're gonna start doing got... makeup tutorials on how to hide these goose the eggs one, because the one so many girl, people are gonna have it. The first girl, Hallie Hallie Kate, who's like a big influencer, she literally posted that she was like, I went to urgent care, like I'm fine. You know, they just said to look out for anything. And she literally was contouring her face around her bruise. Mad Y'all dog, are fear mongering. These cities are completely safe. Mad dog, you remember There's when you nothing got nothing wrong with them? You remember when you got stalked? Yeah. yeah, remember when I got chased? chased? Yeah. Yeah, like, oh my God, I didn't even put that together, that similar situations. <coughs> that was the scariest day. Fear mongering. That was the scariest moment of my life. And I lived in that area. Like, not that it's the same guy. I highly, highly, highly doubt that. But like, I lived in a safe area in New York. I like, don't understand. Like, I just, it's it's crazy that these things just happen. In I got by, chased and had to run into my bodega and hide behind the, my deli counter. Like, and by the way, this this is, I grew up in outside of New York. This is abnormal. This isn't like oh, suburban kids move to New York City and, and experience like serious like crime for the first time. No, this is abnormal, and the rates don't show it. And they're like, oh, a crime's actually dropped because they're not responding. Like they're not taking down the actual statistics on the crimes because it's happening like like it is up but it is down because it's not being written down that's what's happening it's just frustrating okay well i want i i hope that they'll catch i it sounds like it's one person doing this if it's the same like mo it could be gang initiation are those real though like again like I've, i've always heard growing up like don't flash your lights at people uh, if you see a car that's driving without headlights on because it's a gang initiation where they'll run you off the road and assault you. I've heard like a lot of, I think I feel like most gang initiations they just they jump them in and they beat each other up for like sixty seconds and then that's it. Well, who know, like who knows? Who knows? But I hope they catch whoever's doing this. Um, all right, so. Yeah, it's some heavy shit. In the, give me some some lighthearted shit to talk about. It's opening day. It's opening day. We made yeah. it. Baseball is back. I'm gonna get big into baseball this year. You say this every year. <laughs> big Are you into doing Seahead head Express? I yeah. You know what? I will. I'm gonna draft a fantasy baseball team. I'm also betting a, against the Athletics every single game. <laughs> I'm gonna bet a total of a hundred thousand dollars over the course of the season against the Athletics. So I'm gonna bet. I think that comes out to like six hundred and thirty-seven dollars a game. Against the athletics, why uh, not just why not just go for a grand? You don't have it like that. No, because I want to do a hundred thousand over the course of the year and see how much money I make. Okay, I'm going strictly based off vibes. They have okay. the worst vibes in baseball. They they don't have a city really. They're in the process of maybe moving, but their new city doesn't really want them. Um, the owner of the team is just a garbage human being. Does not care about winning and losing. Their fan base is a good fan base, but they've checked out because they've been treated like shit over the past 10, 20 years. So they're all out on the team. I just feel like this is the team that has the worst vibes in baseball. I say every year on opening day, like, pick a team this year, Dodgers or Braves, and just bet on a money line every single game. Yeah. And you and I never do it. You should. I know. The Braves are going to be good. I might I might join in on on just against the A's with you. My biggest problem with this is remembering to do it. Because exactly. I have to make so yeah. many bets, so I've got. I'm gonna have Stephen Che. I think he's gonna text me every morning that the that the Athletics are playing and remind me to fade the A's. I was gonna do the White Sox because there's also bad vibes with the White Sox. But yeah, they're gonna be bad. I don't want to like. I don't want to take a shit on the city of Chicago after I just moved here. There's another team here though. There's another team here. Yeah, there. you're. You're. Are you in Cubs territory? You're in White Sox territory. There's a little bit of both. I think the whole city is Cubs territory. Yeah, the the office is also Cubs territory too. What? It's it's like, like I the, your coworkers. I don't see any White Sox stuff like out, which is a shame because they've got I think they've got great hats and a great logo. Yeah, I would say the majority, probably the majority of people in this country who wear a White Sox hat are not White Sox fans. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. Also, Darren Ravel tweeted about their new milkshake. Mm. Oh, great. Did Good see job, that. Is that... Okay, wait. I also was going to text you guys this. Is Darren Ravel's thing tweeting new food in oh, baseball oh, stadiums? Oh, it's oh, one wow. of his favorites. <laughs> That's so weird. That's Jeff's best friend. Yeah. You like Darren Ravel? 
Garnerville got me my started my career. Fun fact. Are you for real? I'm at my job at ABC. Yep. Oh. I, I haven't talked in a long time. I, I don't I don't know if, if the, it's the bar still of it all, and I'd imagine that's the case. But that is that is how his Twitter became very popular. But um, I I wacky food stuff from stadiums and venues. I thought he was just like a sport like I don't know, like a sports reporter. I've never really looked sports into business. my Oh yeah. Oh okay. Like I've never really looked into the Darren Ravel of it all, besides his like MLK memorabilia. But like I saw that tweet and I was like, "Why do I? Why should Darren Ravel care about the milkshake that the White Sox are serving now?" No, that's what he got does. That, got that Rosa Parks do signed it. auto. It's like it's like Facts. it's like every uh, not just ballpark but also events. He likes to go to events and show what kind of food they have there, like concerts. Yeah, he'll be like, "Here are the prices." Yeah, like Super Bowl beer prices every year. Yeah, that's his shtick. That's his one thing. of them. Yeah, he, he definitely expenses all of it. Well, the one, the picture of the milkshake, which did look delicious, but was like, it wasn't him holding it. It was a girl's hand. Yeah, that's well, what he does. He'll, he'll take somebody else's photo. So he'll just rip, and he'll then, just rip off other people. He did give them credit. He, he tagged, he said photo by Levy restaurants in the picture. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he, he will take that content and then use that as his own. Well, like every year the teams do like an unveiling of like, here's what's new. So he, he just gets the pictures from that now this milkshake it, does look amazing I doesn't it? Really good. See, so I'm going, were like maybe we should go to guaranteed rate just check well it i'm out. going next week but it's going to be like 35 degrees i don't think you can get a milkshake then oh you you have yes, to. you, you probably could but you might not want it's a to. s'mores milkshake it's a campfire it will milkshake. It'll stay warm you up. frozen that's longer, true though. yeah yeah, yeah. You remember yeah, last year, i might do it you remember last year when that uh that person got shot at the white Sox? i do it's game? all i've been thinking about. and then everyone was like well, that that's how unsafe Chicago is right now. That bullets are flying into the stadium from outside, and it turns out it's a woman that smuggled a gun into the stadium in the rolls of her fat. I would argue it's worse yeah. that you can get a gun into the stadium than if a stray bullet had flown in. I, I I would agree. Like, yeah, security's not really doing a great job there. I wonder if that woman just if she kept the gun, if that was her everyday gun, or if she forgot that she had the gun in her fat when she walked in. Well, it might be an even emergency know. gun fell in yeah yeah it might yeah good point it might have just she was getting ready it fell in got stuck didn't know the gun was there uh, but yeah that's that's really all i know these two things are the only thing i know about the white Sox for the past calendar year the milkshake and um the gun and the lady's fat garrett crochet did, opening day starter okay did you that. uh pft are you still thinking about fighting darren Ravel and rough and rowdy i mean anytime anywhere you non-sanctioned you want to uh... say I'll do it for free. I'll fight Darren for free. Darren wanted $2 million to fight me. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I, I said I'd do it if, if Dave would agree to pay Darren Ravel $2 million bucks, mm -hmm. But Dave does not want to pay Darren Ravel $2 million. So. But I'll show Caitlin Clark mutual too, combat no. state. Anytime, anywhere. Ravel knows that. He claims I'm ducking him. Anytime. If he walked in this room right now and he was ready to fight, I'd say, let's go. Is it on site? No, I'm not going to, like, sucker punch him or anything. Is it on site? Like that'd, be, that'd, be a, that'd be a sad thing for me to sucker punch Darren Ravel. Um, no, I'm just saying, like, anytime, anywhere, in a in a fair fight that we both agree to, I, I'll do it. So a lot of pay-per-views. I say challenge him to a duel as a man. I want to bring back dueling. Not this is uh, a bit. I, I don't plan on oh, instituting no. this. Oh, no. Come on, Billy. Don't do this, Billy. You've said that before. I think before. we should bring back dueling. You've said it before on the show, not as a bit. No, I would not institute as a lawmaker, but maybe <laughs> just, you know, the idea of dueling. Like as as a, you know, dueling can take many forms, not just violent forms, like challenging duels in anything that's legal, like beer pong Slap, games. Slapping somebody's face with a glove. I want to bring and, that back. Big T, you, you're a big fan of Hamilton. Do you think we should bring duels back? Uh, Probably not. Mm. Like the world's gone soft. That's how dramatic would it be if you just like I challenge you to a duel? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be fantastic. It'd be like sundown. Like it could be anything. Like sun, like pistols at dawn. Three point contest. And somebody has to accept, or else they're a coward. Yes, and if they don't accept, you can just be like coward. All right, let's talk about Super Size Me. Uh, I loved this movie when it came out. This movie was awesome. I was like, holy shit, this guy, this guy's doing some real boots on the ground journalism. I love it. Morgan Spurlock, national hero, exposing McDonald's for the greedy fucks they are. And then um, time passes by and you see it a little bit differently. Jeff, I know that you're 
a big fan of this movie in general. Um, and you just watched it what last night? Um, yeah, I rewatched it last night for the first time in a while. I watched it a couple of years ago. He released his third movie a few years ago, Super Size Me Two. Mm-hmm. Um, Super Size Me Two. Something chicken pun. I think it was Holy Chicken. Holy Chicken. Yes. 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 Yeah. And he uh, he struggled Crazy. finding distributors for that, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, I, I like I I think the <clears throat> the content of this is definitely important and is clearly still relevant twenty years later. So oh. like you know I, I'm not like laughing at the idea that like like I know fast food is bad for you. I don't eat a lot of fast food. I love fast food. I love like the idea of fast food. Like I love. Like I just it's like one of those like weird like side not even a hobby just like things I'm interested in like limited time stuff I get it probably like once every other week like I don't eat it that much like I know a good friend of I mean our coworker friend of the show Donnie Donnie does this like on a record saying like this is all I I don't I do love it though and if I could without looking like a like a balloon I would absolutely do it yeah so how, I get all of that how frequently um, do you eat fast food because you do know a lot about one, fast probably food. once every other week um. More, I don't drink much anymore. Like I don't go out much. Like when I when I would go out and drink, I'm gonna say definitely get it more. Like just drunk. Yeah. Um. So I get all that. With all that said, fuck this guy. <laughs> I fuck it. I hate this guy. Uh, Did you hate him before? Uh, before the incidents. My, I think the greatest, so you really the, hate the him. greatest item in the history of fast food is a supersized French fry McDonald's. It doesn't exist anymore. It's not around. Uh, I wish it was still here. It'd be the only, I, I, I would just get one supersized fry every other week if that's what you told me to do. That's all I could do. I wish it was there. It's the perfect size for like a gluttonous fast food activity. Before Beyond we go that, any further, before I have a question because mm -hmm. y'all are older than I am. Um, so super size was bigger than a lo the current large. Correct. Yes. They didn't just other make places the large had bigger. them as well. They're like uh, Wendy's had the great biggie. Like they had like the the larger than it wasn't just McDonald's. Was Burger King king size? I believe so. Because the McDonald's large fry is big. It's big for sure. And I know like a lot of times people will just make the large biggers. Like if you ever go to a movie theater and you get a medium soda, like how giant is that yeah. soda? That's a medium. That's a large or an extra large anywhere else. No, the super size fry, it was legit. It what was percentage awesome. bigger than the large would you say? Ooh, that's a good question. I would guess 15, 25, somewhere in that range. It was more fries. It was like substantially more fries that you would get. So it says that the supersized carton of fries held seven ounces and the large that stayed on the menu was six ounces. Okay. There was right, just so something about the box too. It had the big name on it. Just there was the super sized box was just cooler. It was great. It had you know the McDonald's fry box is, is red, and then at the top, I think the extra super sized section like was yellow on the box, so you could yes, see how was. much more fries. You're and getting. it's it's about the it's about the culture. It nothing with, you can get you Chicago. I think was the first place to get. You can get the basket of fries at McDonald's, like that. The that's a thing, and that's a, it's massive. Chicago just is like, like the ultimate McDonald's place. It's, it's one the, of those things where I restaurant. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's bad for you, but I kind of know that. Like, so Burger King came out with a thing a couple years ago called Satis Fries. It was healthier fries, but nobody ordered them. Because if you're going to go to if you're going to Burger King for fries, you're going to get fries. Like, it is, there's not like an in between. Um, so I, I don't know. So, but but also beyond that, every time I watch it, the older I get, like, there's just some there's just some shit in this movie that just like kind of kind of reeks. It just stinks a little bit. Yeah, like it just does, it just uh, like taking some liberties here and there, and like he's not wrong in a lot of things. Like the food lobby and all that is obviously crazy, and a lot of like the main points are fine, but there's just some things he does that are just kind of gross. And I, I mean, I I won't jump too far into the movie, but him in the first 15 minutes, his second day eating McDonald's, he projectile vomits like a qu double quarter pounder <laughs> out of his window. That's yeah. one of the biggest loads of, loads of crap I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. Yeah, he, I, my guess is he was probably slamming beers at the time. Or like I've, drinking. I've never believed. I've never believed. Uh, we we can get it. Well, we'll get into that second because there's other other factors that play with him that that play into this whole thing. So, I think that McDonald's needs to bring back supersized fries. I feel like we've waited long enough. Everyone understands fast food isn't healthy for you. It's much more clear now than it was back then. Which is, by the way, not to say that it wasn't clear back in 2004 when this movie came out. Everybody knew that. 
fast food was bad for you if you ate it all the time. That's never been like a secret, maybe in the 80s or the 70s. But uh, everyone knew that if you had McDonald's all the time, it'd be bad for you. We know, we understand, bring back supersized fries. Yep. Bring them back. But how about this? What if McDonald's on your little app that you have, you can, uh, you can track your steps that day. If you get 10,000... <laughs> If you get 10,000 steps in a day, McDonald's will sell you a supersized fry. I'm all for it. You want big I'm tech, in. more more information. I just want supersized fries. I'm willing to compromise. They have the basket now. I'm willing to compromise See, my See, the liberties. basket's not like, what, are you going to carry on the basket? Like a weirdo? Like, no, you just want the big, the big stupid I mean, fry. I, I, I would, want I the would great venture big 90% drink. of people are getting McDonald's in their car and then taking it home or eating it in the car. Just want I just it, it's the nostalgia effect for sure. Yeah, and also somebody saying, "Do you want to supersize that?" And you say, "Yeah, I do. I would love to supersize that. It's yes. a good feeling." I would love to feeling. be asked. Yes, you know what? That's the other thing. I would love to be asked to supersize an item again. Yeah, it's like they assume I don't want to supersize it. Ask the question. Uh, so this uh, also that that's, uh, I'm sorry. It's, this guy's so full of shit. That's the other thing he did too. Is he made it seem like every he, he made it seem like he couldn't walk out of the restaurant at McDonald's and get asked if he wants to supersize it. At the end of the movie, they're like, he got asked nine times. Yeah, yeah. Nine, asked, he got asked nine out of 90 meals. It's such well, bullshit. Well, I won't count breakfast because you can't supersize breakfast. So you got asked nine out of 60 meals. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're forcing fries down your throat. Yeah. So it, the context around all this is that uh, back in 2001, Fast Food Nation, the dark side of the all-American meal came out. And it was a book. Everybody read it. It was very popular at the time. It actually did a lot of good, I think, in terms of opening people's eyes to the, the chemicals they were eating, the uh, preservatives that were put in a lot of fast foods, especially like the trans fats that were put into almost every single fast food meal. And trans fats are, are the really bad ones. Those, those have been proven to clog arteries and things like that. And showing how many trans fats there were in uh, the food that people were eating every, every single day. Uh, that came out in 2001. And if you haven't read Fast Food Nation, give it a look. And so they made a movie based on it. Um, but between the release of the book and the movie, there was Super Size Me. It was 2004. Morgan Spurlock directed documentary following his month-long month experiment from February 1st to March 2nd, 2003, to eat only McDonald's food and to chronicle the effects such a diet had on his body and his mind. So the rules that he had in this experiment... He would have to eat three meals a day from McDonald's. He would have to try every item on the menu at least once. He couldn't have anything from the outside. So McDonald's did have, they had like the, the salad shakers or whatever, right? They had, they had some semi-healthy things on the menu, didn't they? Some, yeah. But not, yeah, it was. It not was, like they do now. They, they, they promote a few more now. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even the salads weren't that good for you. Uh, so he'd have to try every item on the menu at least once, and he had to supersize the meal if he was offered by the cashier, but he couldn't say supersize. Um, and then, yeah, he only had nine supersized meals over the course of the month, and he tried to limit his daily step count every day to 5,000 steps because that's about how much the average American walks every day. And, uh, yeah, he, he did this under the care of a doctor and his vegan girlfriend who was disgusted with him. Uh, that that was very funny that he made his vegan girlfriend watch every meal that he ate and she was just grossed out by him the entire time. So he goes and he, he gets his stuff checked before the experiment. So he goes to a doctor. They measure his cholesterol. Um, they measure some liver counts. And uh, he talks to his internist and kind of lets his doctor know what he's planning on doing. His doctor is like, well, I can't like I can't say, yes, do this medically, but I will I will monitor you. Um and so he goes through this journey. Jeff, what were the big, what, what specific parts of the movie as a film um, stand out to you that you want to discuss here? Because I can, I can talk about what happened to him. And uh, the I think it's probably worth it talking had. about what happened to him, to him first. Okay. And like okay. what, like who he is, what he is. Um, do you want me to say what he did? Well, so I, I, I can tell you that he gained 24 pounds over the course of a month. Uh, he had a 13% increase in body mass and had a dramatic spike in his cholesterol. He also developed depression. Uh, he became lethargic and he stopped wanting to have sex. 
So after three weeks into the journey, he went to his doctor. He also said that he had oh, the heart. girlfriend did confirm he still has a big dick. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's very important. She made I was that, in yeah. the movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was like, it's still good. Don't get me wrong. It's like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, he goes to the doctor and he's like, I'm dealing with heart palpitations. It was after three weeks. And the doctor said, you have to quit. Stop doing this experiment. You're like Nick Cage from leaving Las Vegas. Nick Cage in leaving Las Vegas, he went to Vegas and then tried to drink himself and party himself to death. Um, and so Spurlock said, no, you know what? I'm going to keep going with this and uh, and we'll see where this takes us. But he he claimed that he had a lot of uh, other symptoms that weren't necessarily measurable that he was just dealing with that he was experiencing because of his diet. And um, the fast food industry was not happy with this because obviously it made them look like their food poisoned you. Um, and then it took, it took McDonald's a few months to really grow some balls and say, wait a second, this guy ate every meal at a restaurant and nobody eats every meal at McDonald's. Like McDonald's is not, the average person eats it like once every month or twice a month. And this guy was having it every, of course it's not good for you. If you have any type of food, right? Like if you imagine if you went to cheesecake factory for breakfast, lunch, dinner, you definitely get in worse shape than this. Ask Vince young about that. Then he do that. Yeah. You, you would get cut from the Tennessee Titans if you did that. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I, I think that's like, that's part of what, cause there are some things from this that I do think are interesting. And I've always found interesting. And I think like the, like the, the the depression side of things, like how down he gets, how horrible he feels. Like that's something I didn't fully understand as I got older. Like I'm, I just turned 33. Like if I were to sit here and eat a double quarter pounder fries and a sugary soda, I would, I would feel like death probably for the rest of the day. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel great. Uh, so like all that stuff and like the addiction to, to it all, like, I, like that all does make sense. But again, it's like fucking on every day, like he super minimized his travel and walking like big time um like put himself on a step count they're just i don't know it's, it's a little it's sensationalized to to a small extent yeah and yeah. he's right though about the fact that the fast food industry they create menu items um using sugars and fats that will produce like a positive dopamine response in your brain that people like to eat like i'll tell you this like mcdonald's cheeseburgers they're not the best tasting thing in the world but there's something about eating a McDonald's cheeseburger. You recognize the feel of it. You recognize the flavor and it makes you feel good for a second. That, that part is definitely true. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, you, you saw him the second, he, the first one he had, which, which I think it said a lot about his relationship, not, not to get all deep here, but his, his wife or his girlfriend uh, as a vegan chef. Uh, and he, that first bite of of his Big Mac, that's a man who was very happy to not be eating his wife's disgusting food. Mm -hmm. Not that vegan food is gross. Like, there's definitely some very good, but, like, she was giving him, like, that shit casserole and nasty. There's a whole artichoke. Just, like, is it, yeah. like you, he, the smile on his face when he was eating that first Big Mac, he was so happy to be far away from his girlfriend not eating her dog shit food. Um, that's That said a lot. So he was, in, he was loving it at first. Yeah, he was. He had the same reaction to that that any of us had when we were like eight years old, getting a Big Mac as a treat. It's like, yeah. yes, Big Mac. This rocks. it said it said more about anything his relationship than I do think it said about. about the yeah, food itself. Well, that's the other thing. Like having having somebody as a central figure in your documentary, and you're like, this is my girlfriend. Like it's kind of a weird person to include, right? I feel like most people that make documentaries, if they have a girlfriend, they don't make their girlfriend part of the movie. You gotta yeah, be married. She, it, it should be wife if, if you're gonna have that person, because you're gonna watch that movie. That movie's gonna stand, you know, hopefully the test of time, and be rescreened tens of years from now, fifty years from now, and it's like, oh yeah, that's the girl that I was dating at the time. I don't know where she is now. We broke up shortly after I made this movie, and I'm glad I'm not eating her her artichoke fart pie that she was <laughs> serving me in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, I wonder if McDonald's. Do you think McDonald's ever thought about making a vegan menu? Don't they have a Beyond Burger now, or is that? Does McDonald's do Beyond? I forget. So many do Beyond that I just yeah. kind of forget. But I don't. I don't know if they. I mean, they've they've done some weird like. Yeah, they I mean, make place tries to get more like Taco Bell. Very recently, as of like two weeks ago, has started to basically try to do their own Chipotle. Um, and I had it. And it was it was it was good because like I mean Taco Bell is basically 
just like Tex-Mex ingredients. But like they're doing like bowls. It's called um, their cantina chicken menu. And the idea is that like it's Taco Bell you can have like during the day, not mm. late at night when you're drunk. And it's just like bowls, just like it's, it's like a burrito bowl from, from Chipotle. That's very funny that Taco Bell had to be like, we need something that people can eat during their day. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> like in the like, light of day. So, so I mean, we, like everyone's we still need a, doing We need a menu item that somebody can eat and then go back to work. <laughs> So the salad shakers were cool. I like the salad shakers. Wish they bring those back. They were fantastic. Jeff, what's your favorite McDonald's menu item of all time? Do fries not count? No, I'm gonna allow the fries. Yeah, I mean, it's be fries. Kind of the though. original, original chicken selects were amazing. Oh, the selects. Yeah, the chicken selects were were very good. Like they were prime right around the like. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I associate with the Olympics, the 2000. Uh, the 2004 Athens Olympics. I remember that was a huge deal. Like they they had they had and they really ramped up the advertising. The original chicken selects I like. I, I I just get now if I get McDonald's, it would just be the double the two small cheeseburgers. I I quarter pounder. Like I like I, I like still, but I do the cheeseburgers, fries, keep it simple. I don't get uh, McDonald's very often, but I like the quarter pounder with cheese. That's that's probably my favorite sandwich that you can get at McDonald's. It is great. Yeah, it is. It's a solid one. Uh, what's your favorite? limited time only offer that McDonald's has ever done. McDonald's LTO. Did you ever have the McPizza? That's the proper speak. I don't know. I don't love their... They had a McPizza at McDonald's. Yeah, you can get the McPizza in Orlando still. I was going to say, I know there's the one at Disney World that does pizzas. Dave, Dave got the McPizza. I don't think there's any... I don't love the McDonald's limited time stuff. Spicy McNuggets? Oh, spicy yeah, the spicy McNuggets, McNuggets were, were pretty decent. I like those. But like, I don't like like they have like fish McBites. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't, I don't really care for the McRib. I'm not a McRib guy. My dad loved the McRib. Um, I like it. I like it, but not all the time. That's it's good that it's limited time only. That it, they bring it back all the time. Yeah, because they bring it back at the perfect timing where you miss the McRib, and then you're like, oh, thank God the McRib's back. And then you have a couple of McRibs, and you're like, okay, I probably won't eat that until they bring it back again. I, you know, I've, I like. I like the sh- I like the shamrock shake, so but I, I like just, it if it's cut with chocolate. Like I like I like doing half and half. I was just about to ask. I've never had a shamrock shake. Have, are they are they good? They're good. They're legit. Yeah. If you like mint chocolate, I I would suggest cutting it with with chocolate. Like I I think I think mixing it with chocolate and or if you do vanilla, I I think it ends up being pretty good. If you what? like mint chip stuff. What the hell was the grimace shake? Oh, the purple one. Yeah, it was the last. That? that was the last. Me, the last thing I ever ate in the New York office before I moved was the Grimace. <laughs> that, that's a very me and Nick fact. got it. <laughs> Did you do the video? It tastes like fruity pebbles. It says it's a the berry best flavored milkshake. It. Yeah, the uh, some Grimace people, legend. Some people don't like the uh, the mint flavor in in ice cream. Like Trent, Trent hates mint. He says mint belongs in the bathroom. Leave it, I keep agree with that. I'm not staunchly pro or anti. I love mint. I love mint. I love mint chocolate chip. I love the the color of green that they always use to denote. The best McDonald's thing that I ever had was they had this chicken sandwich. When I when I was working for Team USA at the Olympics and like the Olympics, it's no joke. It's McDonald's everywhere, and the athletes eat there. It's it's crazy. I mean, you've seen both of them say like he won gold medals eating McNuggets. But they in London they have like a a, a different type of chicken sandwich there. Yeah, amazing. Foreign McDonald's is, it's better. It's yeah, better. It's, a, it's, it's hands down better. Yeah. Like they, we, we had the Mick Arabia in Qatar. Me and Donnie did. It was like a chicken, just a chicken sandwich. <laughs> we need a Mick USA. We what, what's on the Mick USA? I think it should be like the. Are you familiar with the McGang Bang? Yeah. Yes. That that should be the Mick USA, but an official menu item. So they also got the they got the Cosmics now. That's like their version. That's like their Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's like one here. Offshoot. Yeah, it's, there's a bunch in the Chicago area. Yeah. So the the McGang Bang is a quarter pounder with cheese with yeah. a chicken patty on it. A McChicken. Yeah. What about what about one of those eggs from the egg McMuffin? The perfectly uh, circular egg that they put on there. You could put that on there if you'd like. Maybe um, in, you know how the Big Mac has three slices of bread. Maybe the middle slice of bread on the McGang Bang is a McGriddle. Ooh. Yeah, that's the that's the McUSA. Okay, so yeah. burger on top, McGriddle in the middle, McChicken Wait, on bottom. Let me back you up. Sesame seed bun on top. Right. And then you get your burger, your uh, ketchup, mustard, lettuce, tomato, burger, McGriddle, 
fried chicken patty. And then another bun. And then another bun on the bottom. Any fish in there? No. No fish? Oh, mayonnaise on the bottom, too. Or whatever dressing they put. No, no, special sauce. Big Mac special so sauce. So one olive beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onion, mm. McGriddle, McChicken. On a sesame seed bun. Right. Yep. One of the best limited time items is much older than me. I don't know if it's much older, but it's definitely older than I can remember. Uh, it was called the McDLT. And Jason Alexander, yeah. George Costanza fame, was the commercial. A horrible jingle. Very funny commercial. But it was this behemoth styrofoam box. And the burger with the bottom bun was on the left. Um, <laughs> and on the right, it was the other bun with the lettuce and tomato. And the idea, and this is part of the jingle, was keep the cool, cool and the hot, hot. And that way your your lettuce and tomato <laughs> were crispy and cool when you got it. And you you would fold it over and eat it right when you got it. I don't hate that idea. I will say yeah. in the in the era of uh, delivery services and all that shit, we need yeah. some innovation like that. I would argue that the that the <laughs> that the the airplane sized styrofoam box was definitely part of the problem for the McDLT. It was huge. Yeah, I'm looking at the commercial right now. Jason Alexander playing George Costanza pretty much in this <laughs> yes. commercial. And the side by side, yeah, that is a it's a, it's a huge box. I can imagine that the packaging had something to do with why they don't sell that product anymore. That probably yeah. just took up so much space in the McDonald's. Uh but their fries are goaded. Chad Johnson eats McDonald's. I don't three I don't care about the Sundays. snack wrap. I like the snack wrap, but I I don't like I'm not also they're like it's coming back in twenty twenty five. To tortilla with chicken, lettuce, and cheese. Yeah, Jerry was very passionate about bringing back the snack wrap. And then he had yes. one, and he was like, oh, it's not as good as I remembered. No, it's the Mc, not, it's, also yeah, the I McRib. Don't... Yeah. Yeah, the McRib, I, again, I think that's one of those things that's, that's good when it comes back, and then it goes away for a while, and then it's good again when you have it again. You can't he, – they don't let you overdo it on the McRib. Well, they do. Well, one time PFT handed me a bunch of, what was it, gift cards from McRibs, and I ate so many McRibs, and I was like, I'm never eating a McRib again. Because how many did you give me? You gave me like 100? Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I think McDonald's just gave me like a stack of McRib gift cards. I was like, go for it, Billy. And I ate way too many. Like, I ate it for like three days straight. And I was like, I can't ever eat this again. Yeah, I think that was like part of an ad deal. Like, Billy's going to have one for lunch every day while the McRib's back. Remember when you stole the Chipotle test lab invite from me? No. In 2017? I got one of those. No, they sent it to me, and then you took it? Because I no, DM'd they, the woman from Chipotle about it? They sent a bunch of cards to us. We had several invites to the Tesla. A bunch of, a bunch of people from Barstool went over there and tasted their, their queso before it I came out. I don't I think you stole it. I, the, got, I didn't go the, over the, there. The Test Kitchen restaurant is in Manhattan. Yeah. Chipotle is yeah. the greatest hedge McDonald's ever made of all time. I mean, think about it. They looked at demographic change uh, of like a super size me probably caused migration to farm fresh uh, whole foods and like killed it. Knocked it out of the park. Does they McDonald's own for, Chipotle? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they bought it originally when they franchised it. They fully divested their investment in October of 2006. So they, but they did at a time. At, at a time, time, they own ninety percent of Chipotle. That's crazy. And uh, when did Super Size Me come out? Two thousand four. Yeah. So as a complete reaction to Super Size Me, probably. I mean, it had to have some impact on people wanting to buy more organic, local food. Um, they like to Tex Mex. They parlay to Tex Mex. And Chipotle. Chipotle doesn't do enough unique things. Um, they, but, they they try they when they first introduced that case it was ghastly oh my god I didn't they know. do the blocking and tackling well yeah standard oh, chipotle is good but how do you screw up queso I couldn't I couldn't figure that out it was I, so bad the first iteration the, the current try, one is fine yeah the the new one's okay but if you try like Qdoba queso if you try uh, Moe's I believe Moe's has some pretty good queso um, pretty good pretty good for big brands and then Chipotle came out with their queso and it tasted like that fake like uh like vegan style queso that had uh yeah. textures so it. mealy that? yeah very mealy queso Ugh. like almond queso or something but they I, I, this may not be true anymore it's been a couple of years but i know chipotle struggled a little bit recently 
because of just how much of a boom Taco Bell. Taco Bell's always been popular, but there mm-hmm. was this run where Taco Bell, when they started coming out with the cantinas, that Taco Bell was booming. When I moved to Manhattan in 2014, there was like two Taco Bells in the city. You can't walk fucking 10 feet in New York without seeing a Taco Bell now. They're on every corner. It's, Taco Bell's everywhere in the city. And they were opening them up in areas with Chipotle's, and apparently Chipotle was dealing with an issue. It was like, what the fuck? Like, like we're not. But it's because Taco Bell, Taco Bell is so good about changing up the menu yeah taking limited time items off bringing them back very soon saying it's a fan thing they have that new menu they did that thing at the spot i we i left i was driving out of vegas and i saw that they had the taco bell like it was like an apple event yeah and i was so upset like we, why, how did we not go to that yeah you got to go to the next one jeff it it, but like, they're so genius about that there's uh, taco bell i don't know it might not be your favorite place whatever i love taco bell but they are unmatched in the game when it comes to marketing their products. Like yeah. it is just, they're so good at it. It did look like an Apple event. You had somebody up on stage with giant video screens and then people in the crowd, like clapping, ooing and eyeing when the new products yeah, are coming out. Crazy. When they, when they dropped the Verde salsa, like the, everyone gave like the <laughs> most thunderous applause you've ever heard. Like they've done it again. Taco Bell's done it again, guys. And crazy. it's per- it's perfect for Taco Bell too, because they have, they do like the same ingredients over and over and over again, but they yeah. just figure out different ways to put them together. And then somebody's like, oh, that's genius. Look at this new menu product. It's like, well, that's kind of the exact same thing, just in a different order. They've put these ingredients together, but it doesn't and that, matter. The, the cantina menus, like the touchscreen stuff, the how customizable they've become. It is just like it's it's they they are the leaders like they are they, the best. They have gone pretty expensive recently, though. Like their prices, like it's not as affordable as it once was, but maybe that's just inflation. That's everything. Yeah. But like, like I was buying tacos the other day at a taco truck and I was with my buddy and I don't like Taco Bell because I don't think the meat is high enough in actual animal proteins. Um, And he was like, yo, this is cheaper than Taco Bell. I'm like, what? And then he pulls out his Uber Eats and he's like, I was like, with delivery or without? And he goes like, with, without delivery, it's cheaper than Taco Bell. And that's when I was like, what the hell is going on in Taco Bell? Like, it's not as cheap as it once was. Like, yeah. I think even relative to inflation. I don't know. Is Taco Bell jacking up the prices? Do they know they've got us by the balls? They might. They might. Uh, in just looking up some McDonald's news, uh, did y'all see what they announced yesterday? Talking about limited time no. offers. I don't know if this is limited time. This may be permanent. By the end of 2026, uh, all McDonald's U.S. locations will also sell Krispy Kreme donuts. Fuck yeah! If they That's why I actually sacrifice. referenced Krispy Kreme earlier with the with the barge because people were pumped yeah. that, that 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 the stock went up for Krispy Kreme. They're like, now is it gonna fuck Krispy Kreme? But yeah, it's like that's crazy. That's big news, huge. I mean, you could now think of all the the tinkering you could do with that. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit worried though about quality. Krispy, yeah, there will be a Krispy Kreme sausage sandwich thing. For they sure. do such a good job with their quality. And you used to only be able to get it at Krispy Kreme stores. Then they expanded in, into grocery stores. And the quality didn't go down that much, if at all. I've got I bought Krispy Kreme donuts from the grocery store that are pretty good. Yeah, yeah. They didn't go the quality's still pretty good. I'm worried about what's gonna happen to the quality of McDonald's. Could be an I, issue. I, yeah. I hope I hope they thought that through because I don't want to lose any of the like child childlike wonder that I have about Krispy Kreme every time I bite one. I would much prefer it be all McDonald's within 10 miles of a Krispy Kreme. We'll have that. Yeah. That yes. makes more sense. And I want there to be a dedicated person from Krispy Kreme <laughs> working in the McDonald's. And all that person does <laughs> is the donuts. What a, what a preposterous thought that is. I love uh, that idea. Like the, he's, he's got like the paper hat on. Yeah. Imagine asking that guy where he works. And he's like, well, it's complicated. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> I work for buddy, you're Krispy not Kreme, this. but in a McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. I want, I want that person to be a Krispy Kreme specialist, a contractor, a mercenary <laughs> brought in to just handle the donuts. Because well, I don't know the, if I trust McDonald's employees to also, they're busy making the sandwiches. They're making the fries. They don't have the same skill set that a Krispy Kreme guy does. I mean, they're not going to make them in the McDonald's, right? I don't know. They're, I mean, they probably can't. I mean, going to the Krispy Kreme stores where they actually do bake them, like, you see the love that goes into them. I think and, my, my guess would be that it would be uh, made off-site yeah. and then distributed to McDonald's. If they hit supermarket quality, at least, 
then I think it'll all be worth it. But they, the thing is what all these companies do, right? And, you know, like imagine going back to the 1950s and eating McDonald's when McDonald's was OG. It would probably be close to In-N-Out, what In-N-Out is now. Like actual ingredients, none of these fillers, none of these artificial stuff. Like, like I'm scared that they're going to switch up Krispy Kreme's recipe to make a dollar profit. I have your answer. To stock thousands of locations of Golden Arches, Krispy Kreme will util utilize a hub-and-spoke model as it does to deliver its popular glazed treats to the 6,800 third-party stores okay. its donuts are sold in as of December 31st. Production hubs, which are either Krispy Kreme stores or donut factories, send off freshly made donuts every day to retail locations such as grocery stores and gas stations. Okay, so it's going to be the same type of donut that you would buy at a grocery store. Yeah, okay. so that's, Still pretty that's good. fine. Still pretty good. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh yeah, that sounds that sounds really good. And there will be a breakfast menu item that has a Krispy Kreme donut on it for sure. Have you ever I'm had cool. a donut burger? Those those have gotten like more popular. I've never. I've had. I'm, not, I'm not into the idea. I've had. I'm one. not either. You guys are on the right track. It's it sounds cool to it's say too much, and it's fun to like put a picture of it online. Yeah, and it's fun for the restaurant to be like, we have a donut burger, and then everybody loses their mind about it. Actually eating the donut burger, not that good. I can imagine. Not that good. The, you know what is amazing, though? Uh, I don't know if we mentioned this, but uh, donut breakfast sandwiches. Yeah, instead of the McGriddle, like put a Krispy yeah. Kreme Now, that's inside. interesting because the McGriddle already is sweet. Like that, that I would be open to like at the right time of day, right right thing. Like, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's very similar to a burger, but I get, but like I don't want like all the shit on it. Yeah. One, yeah. Of, my, one of my favorite limited time offers at McDonald's was uh, the Dream Team Cups. Do you guys know about the Dream oh, yeah. Team Cups? Mm. The best fast food cup of all time. And there's not really a second choice to it. Any Dream McDonald's team. cup. Yeah. Some of the, the limited time cups, yeah. The Dream Team ones, Jeff, they were awesome. And you could put them in your dishwasher. And then every house growing up had like five faded Dream Team cups. With <laughs> like Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley on there. And it was still like a kind of a shade of blue from when you originally got it. But those things stood the test of time. Man, they, they need to bring back the original Dream Team Cups, too. Maybe do it this year. Remember the yeah. McDonald's glasses? They would they would give away, like, glasses yeah. for Disney movies or other shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. They, they are um, they're very good with their, their marketing. Uh, Am so I crazy? Or did they, instead of, to like, a toy for a kid's meal, did they allow you to download a Pokemon from, like, for Nintendo DS? They might have done Adam that. McDonald's. That wouldn't surprise me. Because, or was that Toys R Us? That would have been I, after my, like, that had been after I got, I mean, I, I wouldn't have been the right age for that. But that does sound like something they would have done. I Because I think it was like Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. You could show up and download a Pokemon if you got a Happy Meal. And, like, you get, like, Manaphy. Or was that Toys, I think that was Toys R Us. That, that's not a bad idea, though, to, like, in the Happy Meal toy, just a QR code. Yeah, I, it yeah. was. It Parents was would probably drop. like that because that's just less shit that you have to throw away later. Uh, that was dope. So back to Super Size Me real quick. After Super Size Me came out, most fast food places were like, "Well, shit, we need to start to pretend <laughs> to be more healthy." There was one company that didn't. And Jeff, it's it's interesting that I was on the dozen earlier. Uh, the show hasn't come out yet, but I can say, I can say that. Uh, one of the questions was about thick burgers. Yep. And Hardee's, they decided they were like, fuck you guys. We're going to get big with our burgers and make them less healthy for you while everybody else is getting super healthy. Not only are we going to make them very unhealthy burgers, but we're also just going to have uh, Paris Hilton showing her tits off in a commercial for it. <laughs> yep. Kate Upton. Kate Upton. Shout yeah. out to Hardee's. Yeah. They knew what America really wanted. Yeah. And then their, their uh, CMO. I think it was a CMO at the time. He came out and made a bunch of statements like, yeah, if you're on a diet, fuck you. Like, you're not eating this burger. Hardy's most underrated meal at any fast food restaurant is Hardy's breakfast. Great breakfast at Hardy's. I don't think I've had a Hardy's breakfast. What's it like? It's good. There's good stuff. I've I haven't been in a long time. I've never had Hardy's. I had this take a long time ago. Hardy's overperforms, in and out, lets down. Like, Hardy's is bad. Like, you walk away. You can walk away from In and Out. I, Jeff, are you an In and Out fan? I mean, I'm 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 someone who likes all regional things. Like I'm from Texas, so I'm yeah, a water burger yeah. person. I also live in Southern California. I'll tell you what, I roll up to an In and Out and I get that In and Out fresh and down. 
fucking I'm fantastic. So, fantastic. so I went to a Hardee's not expecting anything special and I got my pants knocked off. I went to an in and out and I was just kind of like, Oh, this is, this is average, but the Hardee's outperformed. So people have gassed up in and out too much. Yeah. But no one's got the common up take. It's very simple. It's simple, fresh ingredients. Make everything right there. Fries are cut fresh. I, I personally love it and out. But I also like, well, it's Carl's, Carl's Jr. or Hardee's, whatever you yeah, want to yeah. say. I like Carl's Jr. Like, I, I do. I also prefer Burger King over McDonald's, and that's like the Flame Royal Whopper thing. That's that's how Carl's Jr. makes their burgers. So, Dude, I think I actually had Hardee's in the Nairobi airport <laughs> in Kenya. And I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, Hardee's Nairobi. Yeah, there's. Um, oh my god, In and Out's fine. I think it's a fine burger. It's it's a good burger, but sometimes people are like, I thought that this was going to be life changing, and then that's In and Out's not life changing. It's, it's just a cheap good. fast food burger, but it's, it's also re- oh, the quality is great. It's really cheap, and it's a good burger for sure. Yeah, um, Hardee's. I need to try their their breakfast at some point. Um, but I think we can all agree McDonald's fries great. Um, what a burger! I prefer what a burgers to McDonald's burgers. So yeah. I would go to Whataburger, get a burger, then I drive across the street to McDonald's, get McDonald's fries, spicy ketchup as well. I'm spicy I'm ketchup. okay. I'm fine with McDonald. I'm fine with Whataburger fries. I got no problem. With Dude, them. they're not McDonald's. But I'm fine. No, they're with them. soggy. They're soggy. They are a bit flaccid. Yeah, they are. For, I mean, but see, like, but I get like, like I'm a, I'm gonna go in and sit down at the restaurant guy too. Also, my mom lives has always lived by one. It's so like I'm taking it home. It's like takes just a minute or two to get him home anyway. With the spicy ketchup, you could put you could put a pi- a piece of shit in that, oh, in yeah. that spicy ketchup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it tastes great. I'd never had Whataburger until like maybe a year ago. They just built one near where my parents live, and I've been a couple times. It's good stuff. They so, they they also have sorry PFT. They also have. Um, did you try the um, the spicy number two ketchup? Have you had that? No. What is that? It was like a white packet, and they only let you have like one or two per order. The spicy two was unreal. Wait, so this is a, a spicier spicy ketchup? Yes. Yes. I, I don't. I'm gonna have to get that next time I'm in Nashville. It's not always. It's it's very rare, but like the spicy two, and they put you on a limit too. I'm gonna see if you can buy this online. <laughs> Did you guys ever go to Culver's? Yeah. Oh, Cul- yeah. Culver's solid. Culver's. Culver's. Culver's, Culver's I think Culver's is the best burger I've ever had, the best fast food experience I've ever had because they have quality dairy. And that's something like real milk is important to me because of protein. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But the thing is, it has totally destroyed my love of French fries because they have cheese curds. Yeah, And it's like, why would you just have a simple carb when you can have a simple, like you can have protein in the carb? And you're just eating a burger with cheese curds and it's like French fries, but better because it's cheese and you just leave getting like so many grams of protein. And like, even though you're taking on the calories, it's, they're not as empty as like a McDonald's going to McDonald's or going to one of these places. Yeah. Their milkshakes are so good. Oh my God. Cause it's not, it's not uh ice cream. It is custard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you can, you can like um, customize them at Culver's and you can like pick out they have yeah. so many different flavors. Also, in the milk, it actually tastes like good, like homemade ice cream. And it is real ingredients. Also, I was about to, I was going to try to stump Billy. The cheese curds actually have a lot of protein in them. Yeah. I just looked it up. Yeah. So much protein. And uh, if this congressional run uh, goes sideways, I think I'm going to try to become a Culver's uh, chain owner, a franchisee, bring it to New York. They also have pretzel bites. Good stuff. Yeah. Jeff, I just bought 11 packs of the Whataburger Spicy Ketchup Limited Batch Number 2 on eBay. I <laughs> hope yeah. these are, like, safe. Spicy 2. 11 packs for 10 bucks. Spicy 2. Spicy I'm, 2. See, I'm, I'm, I, people are like, oh, Culver's, Whataburger. And, uh, no, I'm, I'm Galaxy Brain. I like them all. Yeah, you don't have to limit yourself. That's what Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, like, what are you arguing about? Like, I like all of them. Like people get into big battles about five guys or in and out. It's like yeah. I enjoy both products. Guess what? Yeah, they're they're both yeah, they're both good. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. You don't you, uh, you don't have to pledge allegiance to just one. Like they're that's they're all they're all fun. They're all good. Yeah. I have a conspiracy theory actually. I, I'm glad I get to unveil this on macrodosing. Um I think that the fries that they serve in the comedy cellar in New York City are McDonald's fries. Hmm. I think that there's a tunnel. Because there's a McDonald's that's down the block. It's like closed. 
Oh, they closed that up? Closed. And that, so, that was the Big that Daddy was, McDonald's. Because that was right down the street from my apartment. I went there all the time. So somebody tell me, do they still sell the fries in the Comedy Cellar basement? Yeah, you got to go figure that out now. That's great. That, now You got your answer now. I could because I, I had them and I was like, these fries are fucking awesome. And I kept eating them and then I was like, wait a second. These are just McDonald's fries. Yeah, that was the Big Daddy McDonald's, right? I'm not sure. I I remember you you broke the news to me because you tweeted about it, so it makes sense that that would be why yeah. you tweeted about it. Mm -hmm. A sketchy McDonald's, very shady. It yeah. is yes. it is that it is the McDonald's in Big Daddy, because if that's based off where Comedy Cellar is, then it's right there. Yeah, there's a little yep. park right there you could sit at and eat it though. It was a nice little spot. Yep. Steve Nash. Me, uh, that so when I worked at Sunlight, when I worked at uh, Good Morning America, I think it's the right McDonald's. I was coming home from a Christmas party, um, with uh around the horn zone tony reale um and we, we took we, we split an uber and we were waiting outside i think this was mcdonald's i may be wrong we're always the mcdonald's story so i'll tell it we, we waited in mcdonald's it was snowing out we wanted to wait for the uber and somebody outside uh there was a massive fight and pinned the guy up against the window of mcdonald's beating his face in and then they stopped and they came in and they ordered mcdonald's <laughs> it was like, <laughs> like they got over their tiff and they were like let's go let's go eat a, let's get a big mac that's how it should be. It's like a hockey fight. I think it was at McDonald's. Shake hands with the guy afterwards. Have a Big Mac together. If right next to Joe's Pizza. Good yep. little corner right there. If anybody yeah. wants to know, it's the 136 West 3rd on the corner of 3rd and 6th Ave. Well, no Someone's got to figure exists, that out about the so. comedy. So that's a great, that's a, now you get your answer now. That is an interesting I, theory. I, I got to go back. I'm, I've never been more sure of anything in my life <laughs> than they were importing fries. Um, So yeah, Jeff, you, you love McDonald's. You love, it's very clear that you have a passion for fast food. Um, yep, but unfortunately, you are a distant second in terms of the most passionate person in America oh. for fast food and McDonald's. Hang on, hang on. I have to interrupt you. You're not going to fucking believe this. <laughs> Do you know who bought the closed down McDonald's next to the Comedy Cellar? Louis C.K. The guy who owns the Comedy Cellar. Yeah. This. Yep. Yep. And he's probably still keeping their their fry operation going. That's uh, crazy. The notoriously chaotic fast food location traded hands to the owner of the iconic comedy seller, Noam Dorman. Dorman purchased the building at 136 West 3rd Street in Greenwich Village for $7.3 million. Is Wait, it, so is he going to still run the McDonald's as a franchise or he just bought? He bought the building. I don't know. And he, he told the post the of his plans to open a Got third the comedy club in yeah. the city. But then you still need the supply. Oh, so and he's turning not... it into a new comedy club, it looks like. He he bought the fry machine. How much did he pay yep. for? Yeah, but the fry million. machine isn't special. It's the fry makeup that's special. Because Can we look up the actual composition of McDonald's fry? Because I don't know if it's 100% potatoes. Yeah, I don't know. That's, what, that's they important. Tell you? Well, it's important how they, how they slice them and how they, they probably blanch the fries, get some of the starch out, make it crispy, salty. Because, yeah, okay, so this is the ingredients. Potatoes, vegetable oil, hydrogenated soybean oil, natural beef flavor, wheat and milk derivatives. Mm -hmm. The beef flavor is what people say is the key. That's huh. that's like the oil they fry it in, right? Yeah, they they, they say, like, like there's, I've watched a lot of, like, copycat McDonald's, like, videos, and they say the, the, the beef part of it is a big part of McDonald's fries. Sodium acid pyro, pyrophosphate, salt, yeah. So... That's what's in it, and they're probably that sodium acid pyrophosphate and dextrose probably keep the uh, construction of the fry because, like, when you like McDonald fries look like McDonald fries for like a week. Like, have you guys ever accidentally eaten McDonald's fries like way after they have yeah, been they don't, bought? They don't really keep that well. No, they look exactly the same. That's like but, part of their. But they allure. don't. They don't taste the same. Right, they don't taste the same, but they look the same. Who amongst and, us has not eaten a McDonald's fry uh, off the seat of a car six hours after <laughs> you purchase a McDonald's? Give it three days. Yeah, I thought I've it was fresh McDonald's. I've always thought that that cars should have the cup holders, and then there should be a fry holder in between the cup holders that's specifically made for the dimensions of like a fast food fry container. Didn't Burger King do, they made their fry containers specifically to fit in cup holders? They did a the cup. The fry pod. They did, yeah, they did a cup one time. But can you imagine that, just having a fry holder? Yeah, it'd be great. But everywhere is a little different shape. But you can still just do a rectangle. Yeah. One size fits all.
maybe a collapsing fry holder. Uh, but yeah, Jeff, I want to bring this guy up because you do love fast food, but there's somebody that loves fast food more than you. The goat, Don Gorski. Don Gorski. And this piece of shit. A Jeff fucking also, liar. A fucking liar. <laughs> Jeff hates this guy. So Wait, you think he's you think he's I not telling his, the I truth? hated this this John Lennon looking ass liar for years. <laughs> so Don Gorski is a seventy year old Wisconsin man, and he is the Guinness World Record holder for the most Big Macs eaten in a lifetime. He has consumed more than thirty four thousand Big Macs. He ate seven hundred twenty eight of them in two thousand twenty three alone because he eats two every single day. And he's skinny. He had his first one, or excuse me, after he got his first car in 1972, the first place he went was to McDonald's. He claims he has only eaten one Burger King Whopper in his life because his friend bet him $5 to do it. Gorski said he never ate another Whopper and he used the money from his friend to buy more Big Macs. He met his wife in 1973. That's the year after he began eating Big Macs on a near daily basis. And he proposed to her in a McDonald's parking lot three years later. He ate a Big Mac before the start of their wedding ceremony. He's eaten almost 35,000 Big Macs, Jeff. How can you hate this guy? Yeah, he crossed the 34,000 mark like a week ago. He's the well, goat. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's full of shit, to, to first off. I just I just don't. Also, even if he isn't, he's an asshole. <laughs> just an ass. Why do you he think he's full like, of shit? Yeah, you know, on Christmas, I got to make sure there's there's Big Macs getting made like in the house. I, he puts him in his freezer. He goes and he buys X and puts him in his freezer and he can get out of the house. He's like he's like disrupting his family's meals to make sure they got McDonald's. His wife has a hard a hard cooked meal. Just just a, a, a struggle to get this on the table on Christmas Day. And he's like, nope, got to have my Big Mac. Just a, and he just and it's you know what it is, too. The fact that he just looks like fucking John Lennon. It, 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 give it up. <laughs> give it up. So he, he says that he has OCD, and that plays a big part in him eating all this Big Mac. Fair. Fair. I'll give him I'll give him a tip of the cap on that. Fair. So you don't you don't you don't believe it. You think that he inflates something about this his guy stats? stinks. Just something about him just rubs me the wrong way. He does have a very weird look to him, doesn't he? And the comedy makes the movies like you know, I've only had a Whopper one time. Somebody bet me five, but shut the fuck up. <laughs> How many Big Macs would you say you've eaten? Me, not a ton, because Big Mac's not my go-to. I do like Big Mac, but it's not my go-to. So he, he Healthy claims as that a he... horse. He's right in the area. He's not close, not far off from you guys. Yeah, he should come down to the office at some point. Gorski says that he skips breakfast every day, and the... Other food that he eats is a small evening snack like ice cream, a fruit bar, or potato chips. Um, he said that his favorite food besides Big Macs was lobster, but in 2024, he said the last time he ate lobster was over 28 years ago. So this is all that he eats is Big Macs. He, he doesn't really go much anymore, I believe. I do believe he buys them in large batches. And freezes them like once, once every other week or so, something like that. Those can't be good. No, and those can't be <laughs> it's tracked. Disgusting. It's just, it's just these, these, these freezer burn waterlogged Big Macs. He's just downing like four or five times a day. Ugh. So he walks in and he orders like fifty Big Macs at a time. Yeah, he orders like a, a huge, like, uh, like a, like a, a pallet of Big Macs, basically. And he's he's in relatively good shape, but that's because he only eats Big Macs. He like he unintentionally uh, invented intermittent fasting. He'll just have like dessert at, at in the evening, and then he won't eat another thing until it's Big Mac time, baby. Hey, what well, great great PR team though? Jesus Christ! You search him every story is from a week ago about the thirty four thousand Big Macs. He does have a solid PR team for sure. He's always in the news. His Wikipedia page. He has a Wikipedia page for eating Big Macs. <laughs> He ain't famous for anything in America. Don Gorski. He's our dude of the week this week on Macrodosing. Shout <laughs> Don Gorski. So um, what else in the movie caught your eye, Jeff? I mean, I, I we got to talk about the thing with Morgan Spurlock, what he did a couple years ago, because it's one of the most insane things that's ever happened. It's probably, honestly, it's probably the most insane thing that ever came out of the Me Too movement, pound for pound. Oh, yeah. He canceled himself. Yeah. And he he came out. Now, I'll make sure I get this, the details story right, because it's like a hairy story. He came out and said, I think on Twitter, it's not there anymore, that when he was in college, 
someone he hooked up with, accused him of rape. And it didn't happen. There were no charges pressed. And I don't know what the full fallout was. And and he claims that his side of the story was that like she initially said no to having sex and they eventually did, like after a while it's consensual, all that. He also mentioned that he has like, I guess, never been sober more than like a couple days at a time, something like that. He mentioned that he's been unfaithful to every girlfriend and wife he's ever had. Um, and he also settled a sexual harassment suit, I believe, or misconduct or one of the other. I will look it up so we don't, I don't just bes- besmirch his name um, more than what the facts are. And he he came out and said that like as a I'm going to get ahead of this. He's like and he, mm-hmm. he ended with like I'm part of the problem mm-hmm. and he got out ahead of it and he dumped it out there almost like a. Ah, all right, I'm good now, right? And people were like, no. <laughs> and they're like, we're like, like, none of this was offered up by anybody. Like, nobody came out and was like, maybe he thought it was going to happen. Yeah. But it's like, he's like, okay, I'm good now, right? And they're like, yeah, n- you're not. You just, <laughs> they're like, what are you talking about? You like, you just admitted that you just said all this shit. Yeah, he thought, he thought that people were going to applaud him. He thought that he was going to be like the star of the Me Too movement and to serve it as an example for all men out there. It's like, wait a second. No, you are you are a big piece of shit. Like you've you've sexually harassed people. Well, like, it was definitely part of his probably like, sit around he- around watching hero after hero, man after man fall at the realization of their past indiscretions. I don't sit by and wonder who will be next. I wonder when will they come for me, which I have to say. To me. It sounds like a very self-obsessed like fame seeking thing where he wants to make himself feel more famous and like up there with the fucking spaces of the world right we're like like he he outed himself during the me too movement yeah yeah because he thought that he was as big a deal as harvey weinstein <laughs> crazy yeah he settled and... a sexual harassment lawsuit and has cheated on all of his romantic partners including both of his wives which obviously one of them we saw in this movie and he said, I thought some people would get upset. I thought some things may go away. I never thought it would be complete slash and burn of everything. Within eight days, our whole company was decimated. So uh, by admitting all this, they shut down. He had to shut down his production company. It cost Spurlock and the company millions in revenue from selling the sequel to Super Size Me. They had months before sold the rights for Super Size Me 2 to YouTube Red out of the Toronto Film Festival because it was second runner up for the People's Choice Award. In September 2017, they sold that for $3.5 million. It was slated to be released in April 2018. All that was scrapped when he posted his confession. He said, I went from 65 employees to three. Basically, me and my brother and our accountant, every movie and TV project we had went away. The hardest part for me was I literally put so many people in my company out of work right before the holidays. It was right before Christmas. It was really hard for me to personally understand and deal with the situation, but I also knew I had to put those people into this. I also knew that I myself had put those people into this difficult spot. So he also, he, he says there's alcohol and depression. His father left him. He said he dealt with sexual abuse, which obviously is all terrible, yeah. but it's, and then he also replied to someone on Twitter. He was like, he's like, I'm seeking help. It's just, it's, I, I'm not saying he should have just covered up, never said anything. And like, it's like, I'm not saying hide this stuff, but like the idea of it is just insanity. Do you think that there's <laughs> it's a crazy? Yeah. Do you think that there's a part of him that was like, seeking fame like he hadn't had a good publicity bump in a while and he missed people talking about him and he's like this is a good way i I honestly think that could be the maybe he could have also been like completing a step in like a 12-step program and he like had to like admit everything he's like fuck it i'll do it on twitter yeah that's a possibility like atone for your past mistakes it's It's crazy though there's also uh uh didn't didn't they think that a lot of his health readings was because of his alcoholism yeah he was drinking a lot yeah um, which i don't know if that would explain like such an increase in your liver levels over the course of a month if you were already drinking that much to begin with you probably would have had an unhealthy body at the start of that which is which is why i kind of take issue i mean we can get off the again the cancer thing is crazy can't himself it's like it's unbelievable but that this this goes back to what i mentioned earlier like him just heaving all of his McDonald's up on the second day, like him, him like drinking a shitload too, I may have had an impact on it. Like I'm, not, I don't want to sit here and sound like I'm, I'm like, 
I'm like tied at the hip to like licking Ronald McDonald's boots here. But I'm just saying like there's a little bit to it where it just seems so performative that I, I don't know, like maybe the alcohol had something to do with it as well. Yeah, probably I mean, did. This guy probably just pulled off the greatest way to make a ton of money getting shit facing McDonald's, something that a lot of college <laughs> students do for free and actually pay for yeah. <laughs> extensively. He made millions, millions of dollars doing it. And there the there is- was also like he like, would you not agree with me, PFT, that the, that the Internet accessibility to Internet from the year 2000 to 2004 was a massive boom? Yeah. Like, think about how the Internet access you had in the year 2000 compared to 2004. It was like like almost felt like a hundred year gap. Right. It was the T1 lines. Yeah. So he kind of talked about like he's like when they when he went looking for like the nutrition facts, he goes, well, based on. You know, based on the 2000 census, you know, X number of people in the United States, like, yeah, well, I don't know. It's also like four years later. And like the boom has been much bigger. That also caught my eye a little bit. The thing I laughed about the hardest that I'd never noticed this movie was the nutrition studies PhD at NYU talking about how bad junk food is for you. His name is Marion Nestle. I got a good laugh out of me. I don't know why. That was was pretty funny. (laughs) Is he related? (laughs) I I need to look it up, but I I got a good laugh out of me. Um, So, a lot of people have recreated his experiment and actually have been totally fine and actually lost weight. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, a guy named Tom Naughton and he made a documentary in 2009 called fathead. Uh, and so he, he tried to do the exact same thing that Morgan Spurlock did. And he claimed there's no way that Spurlock ate 5,000 calories a day. And he uh, tried to get in touch with Spurlock to get the food log from the month that he binged on McDonald's. But each mm. time Spur- Spurlock refused or did not return his calls, despite Spurlock making a huge deal and supersize me of McDonald's never returning his calls. Naughton also challenges the lipid hypothesis in medicine, claiming that a high fat diet, um, claiming that a high f- fat diet to increased rates of heart disease. During Naughton's experiment, he limited calories to around 2000 a day and his carbohydrates to around 100 grams, but he d- did not restrict fat at all. He ended up eating about 100 grams of fat per day, of which about 50 grams are saturated. He also decided to walk six six nights a week instead of his usual three. After a month eating that way, he lost 12 pounds. So pretty drastic difference in the outcome of that experiment. There's And like his his other movies, he had the greatest movie ever ever sold presented by like Palm Wonderful or something. He had the the Super Size Me too. He is he is very front and center in all of his stuff. And there's just there's just a bit of sensationalism that like I just don't. It just does. It rubs me the wrong way with this stuff. Even like, 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 leave the leave the fucking school lunch ladies alone. Holy yeah. shit, dude. Yeah. I mean, har- harassing that poor woman and the kid. Just leave them alone. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does have main character vibes to him, doesn't he? And that that that's where I like. That's where I question a lot of it. And like again, a lot of it is I, I get. A lot of it's also like no shit. But there's just some things that, like the older I've gotten, like like when I've rewatched, I'm like, eh. even like the puke thing, I never really like kind of was, like, not until like this most recent watch. I'm like that just seems like bullshit. Yeah, I've I mean, eaten McDonald's. He had a quarter pounder, and he was he was puking like his brains out. I think most people have had McDonald's two days in a row at some point in their lives. Yeah, I've never I've never thought about puking up my. I've never I felt actually... like my body would reject it. I actually ate way too much McDonald's one time and puked it out. Well, what, it, what did you eat though? I ate the steakhouse burger and I ate three of them on the way back. From okay, practice. there you go. What? What? <laughs> like there, 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 yeah. but then he he ate he ate three fourths of a supersized fry, a soda, yeah. and and eighty percent of a double quarter pounder, and you would have thought that he was just poisoned. Yeah, you think, you think he cleaned that puke up? By the way, outside of that, uh, on the ground there in that parking lot, I bet he not. puked like on someone else's car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, there's a guy named John Cisna. He was an Iowa high school science teacher. John Cisna did an experiment in January 2014. He did it for three of his students. He asked them whether it would be healthy for somebody to eat McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for 90 days. He left it up to the students to plan his daily menus with a stipulation that he could not eat more than 2,000 calories a day, and he had to stay within the FDA's recommended daily allowances for fat, sugar, protein, carbs and other nutri- and other nutrients. The experiment was only supposed to be 90 days, but since he ended up losing 37 pounds and lowered his cholesterol, he opted to go for another 90 days. In total, he dropped from 280 pounds to 220. 
and he got some media hype. He was on the uh, CBS affiliate in Des Moines, and then that led to an appearance on the Today Show. Within a few months, McDonald's USA signed Cisna to be its corporate brand ambassador. He began traveling the country to share his story. He was the Jared of McDonald's. He was. He was also in the movie. Yeah, that's true. Does Taco Bell, do they have a Jared? It's just just a chihuahua. Just a chihuahua? I feel like every (laughs) fast food location could, or every fast food uh, franchise could have a Jared. If you, like, you can, you can lose weight eating at all these places if you choose the right things. Yeah. Use the right thing. And that's like, like, again, that's why, again, like it's, it leans into the realm of like, like even after the puking, like he like, kind of like made up an ailment. Yeah. He's like, this, it's like the, everything is like, he's like, he's like, I just like this throbbing near my penis. Like you're horny. I don't know. Like it's <laughs> <Yeah>. not. <laughs> like, that's I definitely what it like, was. What are you talking about? Yeah. McDonald's doesn't make your penis hurt. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. What the fuck? Are you I eating mean, these things? Or are you fucking them? There's, there's this dude on TikTok who did the same thing and has just been eating Chipotle for every meal for like, I think, 96 days now. And the only thing that his blood work came up with was that he had like some high sodium. Yeah, so. I think I, I think just like moderation, everything in moderation. McDonald's is fine in moderation. Right. Um, so there was a, a Swedish university experiment in 2006. Frederick Nystrom, he was a doctor and associate professor at um, some university, I can't pronounce, he found himself with extra money in his research budget and wanted to do something fun, something lasting. So it turned out to be an attempt, attempted replication of Super Size Me with seven healthy medical students in their early 20s, spending weeks stuffing themselves with hamburgers, pizzas, milkshakes, and 200 gram bacon breakfast. Physical exercise was to be avoided. They could not ride a bike. They got them bus passes so they couldn't walk. The students gained between 5 and 15% extra weight over the month. They felt tired and bloated, especially during the first week, but there seemed to be no signs of mood swings. While Nystrom and his team also noted significant changes in the liver, the content of fat in the liver and enzyme levels in the blood, the changes were never even close to dangerous. Nystrom was puzzled about why Spurlock had an extreme reaction, musing that he could perhaps have an undiagnosed problem with his liver, or he says maybe his hardcore vegetarian girlfriend held him to a low energy diet beforehand, making him incapable of coping with this kind of food. So maybe the fact that he was eating too healthy before he started this diet made it have such a drastic impact on his body, which to me, that sounds like the most plausible scenario. I think Spurlock definitely exaggerated some of his stuff like the puke, like the throbbing near his penis, or maybe even inside of his penis. Um, But Maybe the fact that he was super healthy before this started made him actually respond to all the McDonald's in such a worse way. Yeah. What if you just yeah. had an STD? <laughs> yeah. What if you were just trying to cover up like like his alcoholism, his mood swings, his like philandering, and you just like like he's just making up excuses for his girl to his girlfriends about like this is, is the McDonald's man. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably what happened. He said that he cheated on every wife or girlfriend he had. Yeah, he's like I ate I ate so many McNuggets that my fries that my my penis now has these red blisters on them that <laughs> pop up every, <laughs> once every four months and it feels like fire when I pee now. Like fucking, it's fucking the parfaits. I'm telling you, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy couple. how some people like develop these scenarios and are absolute geniuses and how to like live a certain lifestyle underneath like a lie of a production. Yeah, do you, you think he? Saying? You think he made this movie as one big lie to tell his girlfriend about why he had an STD? <laughs> well, yeah, but also to make money to be able what to just theory. get fucked up and eat McDonald's. Like yeah. a lot of people have dreams and he was like, I got a chance to live out my dream and just get fucked up and eat McDonald's cheat on my girlfriend and have excuses for the repercussions. He ends up taking down a multi-billion dollar international corporation <laughs> because, because he cheated on his girlfriend and got herpes. <laughs> that would be, that would be the ultimate plot twist. Also after this movie came out, Spurlock, you remember he did a TV show, Jeff, do you remember his show? I don't remember, but I know he did a show 30 days. It was called 30 days and it was on FX. And in each episode, Spurlock or somebody else would spend 30 days immersing themselves in a lifestyle and see what happens just by spending 30 days doing that. It was a good show. Was it? I only saw two episodes. So I thought it was on CNN, but whatever. It was a good show, though. Like he did one, I remember, on Bitcoin. This is back when nobody knew what Bitcoin was. 
and he tried to like live on Bitcoin for a month. Oh, really? Like only spending Bitcoin. They might have brought it back then because it only it lasted 2005 to 2008. Oh, no, no, no. This was after. This was later, I think. They might have done a, a reboot of it, but this one, uh, the first episode was minimum wage and... Oh, no, no, no. It was minimum wage. So Spurlock lived for 30 days in uh, Columbus, Ohio, trying to get by on a minimum wage, five fifteen an hour. And they didn't have any cash, credit cards, health insurance. They lived in an apartment and their rent was less than their wages for one week. So they had him and his, his fiance had to work minimum wage jobs. And they started out with $206, slightly less than one week's minimum wage pay. And they had to secure all their credit cards and other money were not allowed to access any savings accounts. So that was the first one that they did. Um, they had a straight man living in a, a gay world. That was episode four. Uh, it was a, They found a conservative Christian man who spends 30 days living with a homosexual man in his home in the Castro, the majority gay neighborhood in San Francisco, California. And he had to familiarize himself with the city's gay culture by socializing with his roommate's friends. He had to get a job in the Castro, and then he had to meet with the reverend of the local gay church for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I would like to go back and watch that episode. I, that, that I would like too. It would be, be very funny to watch that. Uh, the show I was talking about was called Morgan Spurlock Inside Man. Okay, so they, they ran back like the it's, same. It sounds like it's pretty much the same show. He just like picks a topic and does a you know thing on it. How it much do you brand? think he spent in Bitcoin in today's terms? He might have spent oh, millions man. of dollars in that, in that 30 days. Yeah, that might yeah, be the no most. Telling. That could be the most expensive movie ever made. Yeah. Uh, episode, I think this was the last episode of Thirty Days that he did. Um, it was kind of like Freaky Friday. They uh, did an intervention of a mother intervening with his daughter or with her daughter, and so the mother to teach her daughter a lesson had to binge drink for thirty days as her daughter watches what a person would go through puking hangovers being drunk as the mother teaches the daughter the mother ends up learning about the pressure teens experience to drink the rules were the mother must drink as much as a college student at least four days a week to count it as binge drinking the mother must drink at least four drinks in two hours she must go about her daily schedule as no normal despite sickness or hangovers that that is such a funny idea for a show just like watch your mom get fucked up for 30 days <laughs> did you guys drink four days a week in college uh yeah, yeah, give or take. Senior year. Jeez. I would say three or four. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Senior year, it? definitely Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday quite a bit. Yeah, or if there was Monday night football. A good Wednesday. A good Wednesday, yeah. We had a, we had a really good – the first at Penn State had a big happy hour. That I mean, it was like dirt cheap, so I, we would do that Sunday, yeah. So in terms wow. of – well, so for four drinks in two hours, yeah, I would say probably four, four nights a week by those criteria criteria because i would definitely do more than that on a thursday friday saturday and then at some point during the week I, i'd have four drinks i wouldn't say that for all four years though but there were definitely definitely times that i partied harder we would I, just do the week after the season ended and before thanksgiving break we'd go hard probably like five days but besides that once a week yeah, but I, I also didn't have football practice every single yeah. day. Yeah. True. Uh, so, yeah, Spurlock, old Morgan. Um, what other ramifications of supersize me? I guess McDonald's, they took off the supersize from the menu. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, McDonald's. I don't like that. Uh, but they said that the driving force behind removing supersize was that uh, they wanted to simplify the menu. They said that they didn't sell many supersized fries to begin with. I don't know if I believe that. No, um, based on the show, he only supersized nine uh, nine out of sixty times or whatever. Yeah, uh, I think the super. Yeah, I don't really believe them. To be fair, either there, I'll be I'll be fair to to Morgan Spurlock. I don't really totally believe that that that's the not the reason why. Yeah, because it was a massive cultural phenomenon. Like everyone was talking about how bad McDonald's yeah. was for you at the time. Also, the supersized sodas are probably worse for you than the supersized fries. Those are a little ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I gotta say, those are a little those are a little. Absurd. It's like the Parks and Rec meme. When it's like the small is like 72 ounces. Yeah. Have you guys ever seen the uh, the sizes? They might have downsized at 7-Eleven too, but they used to have like the oh, double. Oh, they're unreal. The double big gulps. 
I on the way back from Vegas from the Super Bowl, I actually um one of the rest stops was like they were like fixing something, so it was like kind of close. So I actually go, I've never been to a flying J before. Shout out Jimmy Haslam. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, they BT. had a drink size. Tennessee mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. Thought He's it was run, a bit. Uh Joe Joe. Jeff and uh and my football programs into the ground at one time or another. <laughs> yes, impressive. That's true. Yeah. Gonna build a dome in Cleveland, it sounds like. Um yeah, they have a drink since a flying J that I, I was like floored by. Could not believe it. That's for truckers, though, so that kind of makes for sense. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it was, I was like, oh my God. Because the 7 Eleven massive one is definitely for people on the road as well. It says that a double big gulp holds about 64 ounces of liquid. And the fact is that the human average stomach holds about 32 ounces of liquid. <laughs> or the human stomach does not, you can hold. 32 ounces, that's before like less than three peeing, beers. I think. Before it starts to filter into your bladder a little bit. Oh. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely had more than three beers before I've peed before. Then you break the seal and you got to keep going. Mm-hmm. There's something in one of the first scenes that I actually actually stuck out to me and I found very therapeutic and relaxing. When he's getting his first breakfast... Is there nothing more freeing than the idea of being an old retiree just sitting at McDonald's with a little cup of coffee and a breakfast sandwich? Great. They're call. behind him. I'm like, that. those people, they are living the life right now. Uh, another thing. Paper. Mm-hmm. I've mentioned my future life aspirations mostly in my 40s. In my 60s or so, I would love to have a group of fellas meet yep. maybe at a McDonald's or local joint once, twice a week, discuss the local high school football team. You know, whatever's going on in the news. There's Uh a girl who goes viral on Twitter every single week because her dad has him and his buddies and they go to a bar every Friday night and they each submit topics they want to talk Uh about that week. And he makes a list. And that that to me is the dream. That is that is very cool to think about. Yeah, he's trying to take down this restaurant and there's these just these two old people behind and these two old women. They got their steaming hot coffee. They got their sandwich. They got their hash brown. They got their paper. They're having a nice discussion. And this just creature <laughs> is trying to take this guy co- who wore the same shirt for the whole fucking movie, by the way. The same, <laughs> which like I shouldn't be saying because I recorded a bunch of shows. So it looks like I'm doing the same thing. But for that whole movie, the whole road trip, he's wearing the same waffle like crew neck. He, he probably thought of himself like a, a cartoon character. It's like <laughs> yes, people, won't, people won't know that it's me unless I'm wearing my classic shirt. Yeah. Everyone knows I wear. Everyone knows I wear my my muted green crew neck. Yeah, it's like Steve Kornacki, another one of your favorites, with the the pants that he wears. Oh all the yeah, time. oh my god, the uniform. Um, Big T, can you find out what's on the what's on the agenda for the dad's dinner? Yeah, I'll find the most recent because they're great. There was also a dad that went viral during the pandemic because him and the neighborhood dads would go out on the street and set up lawn chairs, standing six feet apart from each other, and just hang out and drink beers together. I love that. Okay, so the most recent one is from last week. This is from March 22nd. NCAA tournament brackets. Winner Kyle and Chris Long joining us. Favorite sideline reporter. Postage stamp costs. Pickleball popularity. <laughs> Godel's completeness theorem. Summerfest, uh, comma, music diversity. True TV. New used car. Squatters laws. Trivia and general discussion. Squatters laws. Wait, Godel's completement theory? Completeness yeah, what is that? theorem. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Completeness theory. Um, it sounds like they're just coming up with an agenda for a podcast. They should do it. it they should just record it. That is the OG podcast. Just dude showing up bars talking. Godel's Because that was the only time men could talk. <laughs> like, think about it. Men don't, like, what's the statistic about men, words men say per day versus women? Yeah, women women be talking. There's also a note at the bottom. Even though we're getting to the bar in the morning, parentheses NCAA tournament meeting will still start at 4 p.m. sharp. Oh, so so it's just free play before then. Yeah, I okay. love that. <laughs> also, at 4 p.m. the business starts. Yeah. Also, Billy it says that women use an average of 20,000 words a day compared to the mere 7,000 that men utter. But that also doesn't count. Are those for... unique words or total? Total. Total. But also oh, that point. does not good count point, for you guys. Yeah, it does all. yeah. I I wonder if, like, I definitely say more words than the average man. I mean, and, you. I mean, this is Yap City in here. 
Yeah. Just, yeah we're, we just chatter away. Yeah. Yo, I, fellas, this is, a four is, hour is talking, is talking feminine. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Fellas. It might be. I just, yeah, women love to chat. They love to just meet up and chat. Guys like to have another, another thing on the agenda that we're doing while we're talking. Bitches be talking. Right, right. Right. So like if we're watching the game, we're also talking, we're, you know, bitching about work or we're asking about each other's families, that sort of thing. But there's always another thing that is distracting us from the conversation with women. Women can meet up and just be like, hey, do you want to get a cup of coffee and just talk? And then you guys just talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's bizarre. <laughs> yeah. No, that's like, yeah. Like you playing guys come catch. Here, you guys come in here twice a week and just yap. I would like to steal our agenda for, um, for nano dosing on on Monday when we record from these guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can we do that? Yeah. For, for one of the longs. That's kind of fucked up. We, we... Actually, like quote tweeted and was like, "Let's make this happen." So that must be where winner Kyle and Chris Long joining us comes from. Yes. Well, he quote tweeted that agenda and said, "Let's make this happen." So I don't know where it came from. They might be doing the same. They might be using that for their podcast. That's true. So then we're we'd be copying. The Long's agenda, which is copying these dudes' agenda. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> but that's how it goes. All right, anything else we want to talk about with Super Size Me or Morgan Spurlock? He directed the One Direction movie. Oh. Really? Mm-hmm. That's creepy. Morgan <laughs> Spurlock did? Yep. One Direction, This Is Us, the Paramount 2013 film of the year. Was it any good? <laughs> it was. I, PFC, yeah. I own that movie. It was good. I love that movie. <laughs> do, you, do you think he was like... I don't know. Do you think he gave them any bad influences? For like being weird to women or like eating yeah. McDonald's? No, being weird to women. No. Because this is in the prime of, of Spurlock problematic. It was, yeah, 2013. I don't think so. I mean, they were, it wasn't like he, the movie, One Direction This Is Us, if anyone wants to go check it out, is a, just a, like a documentary on basically what they do and it was like in the prime of their fame so i don't think they i don't i hope that he didn't because it wasn't like they he had to direct them of like you know like a scripted thing yeah it was just like them being Existing. the most famous people in the world at the time i and mean then, i feel like coming from england from there. they're like oh this guy did a very famous documentary like you should let him direct your documentary yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know the specifics. No, the the five boys that made up One Direction are are mighty, mighty respectful. I'm sure of it. If they weren't, then you'd be just devastated. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would it would be a blow to the ego for sure. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you guys think you could eat for thirty days? Pasta Chick -fil -A for sure. Chick fil A. So yeah. I mm, no. I don't want to yuck your yum. I'm a raisin canes man myself. Okay. I'm sure you are too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bob but raisin canes. Chick fil A, good chicken sandwich, limited menu. Mm. You don't have the variety that you would get at a McDonald's. I could eat a Chick fil A sandwich for 30 days for sure. Every meal. Um, I mean, yeah, probably. I, I want to make a bet on this. It's a very straightforward thing. I like, wanna... Yeah, it is. It's good, and I want to bet you that you can't do it, but I also don't want to do a month-long commercial for Chick-fil-A. Remember when Billy that's, was that's supposed fair. to do... I could, I could do Cane's, too. Yeah? Wasn't Billy supposed yeah. to do something like this for 30 days? No, yeah, no, I ate it was, uh, chicken uh, wings for a week. No, uh, I thought there was something yeah. else, too. Yeah, chicken wings for a week. Yeah. Do you think you could do it with, with Cane's? Yeah. The thing with Cane's, though, is it doesn't have breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. Chick fil A. I can do Whataburger, that's for sure. Chick fil A uh, isn't is changing their chicken source from uh, absolutely no antibiotics to no antibiotics that affect humans. Yeah, there's which, there's really no way to take that news and not think it's going to be a negative for the company. The reasoning is just difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's just I'm. They've just opened up a bunch of new ones, so I guess supply constraints, but it's going to lessen the quality of the food. I mean, Retail that's what we're concerned with about Krispy Kreme. I'll pay you 500 bucks if you do it for a month. Canes is difficult, though, because they don't deliver. So you'd have to go there You'd have every to go day. to Canes every day. Uh, and I'll, I'll pay for all the meals. Canes is so fucking good. Oh I'll consider. God. Yeah, think about that. I'll consider. I need an answer for Monday. Okay. I accidentally ate the 
raising canes ringside at the Canelo fight. Oh, <laughs> Do you really? remember that? Yo, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was just a thing of raising canes right in front of me, and I was just like, oh, this must be up for grabs. I started eating it. It turns out it was the display raising canes. It just looked so good I couldn't resist. <laughs> That's awesome. I was I was really sick. Um, I had like an insane migraine from travel and just not feeling well last year at the Barstool Classic. And I had to drive to uh, Chicago for the dozen Final Four from Wisconsin. And I, 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 I drove in. I, I, I was... It was the worst migraine I probably ever had in my life. Could barely see straight. Like, you really got there just in time where I was like, I may have to pull over. Couldn't see. Needed something to eat. Went to Cane's. I'll tell you what, when you're down horribly and you're sick and you haven't eaten in hours, the dunk of that Cane's bread was mm-hmm. maybe the greatest bite of food I've ever had in my life. It is. Like, 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 like revived me. Like, like somebody like shocked me back into existence. The dunk of that bread, like I, I, I think I ate it on the counter. Like he gave me the food. I'm like, I gotta have something. Like I could barely, I could fu- barely function. I dipped it, unbelievable. That's the first thing I do when we have canes in the office. You dunk the bread, the buttery bread, into the cane sauce, and it's so soft, it's delicious. Oh, the toast is unbelievable. Yeah, it's just, I, it's so good. I think I could eat soup every day for every meal. I believe that. That's, I don't even quite. I wouldn't bet you on that. A lot of a variety. Of, a wide variety too of soups for sure. That'd be an easy. That's one. a lot of. That's a lot of eating liquid for a month. You would probably lose a ton of weight. I might. So I sometimes I do the soup and salad diet or soup and sandwich diet. Um, but yeah, I think I would lose a lot of weight. I might have to do what? that. Maybe next. How about next October? We'll put PFT. that. We'll put that in in the future plans. I will eat soup every day next October as we shift into soup season. PFT, you've eaten a lot of soup constantly, right? Yeah. Does it ever go in liquid, come out solid? Yeah. That's like all it does. Yeah. Yeah, you poop it. I don't. You don't have diarrhea every time you eat soup. I had soup two nights ago. I had pho, and I came in the next day. Well, pho had is a different. nice, pho nice, is good shit. Great shit. What's well, a noodle soup? It's got some beef. It's got some veggies in there. Mm-hmm. I if Panera. Yeah. Panera has enough variety. I feel like I could do that for a month. Yeah. Have they changed their uh, their lemonade? I wouldn't. Oh, get, I don't know. I wouldn't. Uh, the wait, one that have, like the charge. The charge. Have we cardiac talked about, arrest? Have yeah. we talked about the fact that one of our coworkers drinks that every day? Who is it? White boy Rick. He has one every day. He every brings day instead of coffee. Every single day he walks in with a large charge lemonade. I mean, I respect it. There's a shitload of caffeine in there. That's yeah, he's weird. like, I don't drink coffee. I just have my Panera lemonade. Yeah, it is pretty good. But like, I feel like they have a good breakfast soup sandwich. Mm-hmm. Yeah, could you? What about Salad. a sandwich place? Could you eat Subway every day? Ooh, could you so. eat Jimmy John's or Jersey Mike's? Jersey Mike's Quiznos isn't really a thing anymore. Chipotle, you could do no. Chipotle. Uh huh. Every meal. Yeah, I did. I, I that. couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I go on kicks, and then there's days where I'm like, I don't want to look at this for a year. I don't eat it for months. Yeah, no, Chipotle's so hit or miss. I, I could eat so much. I'll tell you what, though. I, I t- there's in terms of like difference between great and bad. The difference between great Chipotle and bad Chipotle is is a like the grand size of the Grand Canyon. It is yeah. Bad Chipotle, good Chipotle is amazing. Bad Chipotle is horrible. When you get Chipotle to go and it shows up, you open up the container. If you get like a bowl, and all the guac and sour cream and sauces all on one side of the bowl only. I don't like that. We should. I, do you think there's anybody at the office that would recreate supersize me? Uh, like McDonald's. Brandon Walker. Guy, he does Chick Fil A. Brandon's such a Chick Fil A guy. Yeah, he does do Chick Fil A. Like, what about every day? Oh. Eddie. I don't know. Eddie's Eddie's a man of culture. Eddie likes a little variety <laughs> in his food. That I would love to see it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find somebody in this White office. Sox, Dave. Over. White yeah, Sox Dave maybe. would probably. Do I feel it. like you could get him to do anything. Anything, yeah. yeah I would do it. I would do it if I was a little younger. Like, my, I just can't. I can't like physically. You would feel so. I, I I don't know what I would do. Like I, I would, it's I explode. Like Chef Donnie, I feel like could do something about that. He's yeah. got way too good of a palate to that's abuse like true. that. That that's like making a McLaren go mudding. <laughs> 
He might do, uh, or Hank might do it. Oh. Yeah. I could see Hank. Hank. Hank yeah, I could see Hank. Hank likes all their stuff, too, though. That's the thing. Fasoli. You know, Hank's got a, oh. Hank has the palate of a five-year-old. Fasoli <laughs> might Fasoli. do that. Fasoli would do it. Oh, you get, you get Fasoli to do Viva. it. For Viva. For Viva. Yeah. Yeah, as if long as you don't make him pay $72 for it. Yeah. All right, I'll ask him. I'll see what we can do. <laughs> all right. Well, Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. Of course. And we'll have you back sometime. When are you coming to Chicago? A lot. I'm there a lot. I'm there for the mini golf in a couple weeks. I'll be there the entire week of the dozen, and I think probably a few days leading up to it. Um, I have to come for some conference for, like, one of our sponsors in May. So I'm going to be there um, quite a bit. And if if things work out with my with my basketball team, I'll be there that entire week of the Masters. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good luck. Because the way travel you. would work. So. Uh, would you care to explain yourself uh, as to why macrodosing falls down the ranks of the dozen? <laughs> they just didn't play last. Okay. They're in a, they're essentially in a tie with a team that has that they have a better resume by a little bit, and they're losing to a team that has a better fan vote by a little bit. It's very even. They're on a roll though. They're, they've won three in a row. We, we tried. To, I tried to get them to play this week, but I but Arian had some some conflicts, so they'll probably play next week. We're gonna go seven and two and be like sixteenth. <laughs> if you go seven and two, you will make it. That's not even really a question. You're the only team right now that's competing for that spot that could run away with it. I don't like when Jeff says that stuff. It makes me feel like I'm in a in a expectations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that is the truth. You've won three in a row. You have a couple good losses. If you stack up one really good win, and then like you could run. Like I just don't like. No offense to Marty Yandel and them. They just they're just not as they're just not as smart. Um, no. And I don't see them winning a bunch in a row where you guys could do that. So, Arian Arian told people he was going to just study knowledge. Mm -hmm. Arians? He must have done it because he's just better this year. Arians been on a run this season. Maybe most improved player. Mm -hmm. He's he is very he is probably top three contender most improved player. Oh, wow. The Joe Flacco award. I love Hell it. Yeah. That'd be really funny if rookie of the year was Keith Yandel. Most improved was Arian Foster. It's like is this <laughs> overrun by accomplished athletes. <laughs> there should be a, a a least improved player, or like a most regressed player. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> I, I'll do that. Don't don't put it past me just to rig it so Arian wins so his Wikipedia can have it on there under his accomplishments. Like I just, yeah, just it'd just be the that. first time anything was rigged for us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you were not going to come back this year. I had to beg you. I to considered play. it. I considered it because because of the unfair media and the the <laughs> fake news that surrounds this thing. Yeah. Also, while it's we're an entertainment, it's an entertainment league first and foremost. Don't yeah. forget that. While we're here, please. Please vote for us for all stars. Yeah, you should have to, how WWF had to change to WWE, you should have to change the dozen trivia competition to the dozen, the dozen entertainment competition. <laughs> we did we did change it to league. We did change it to league. We took out the word league, competition. League is more formal. Major is League it? Baseball, National Football League, those are, those are not, well, they might be rigged, but <laughs> you're out in the open. True. Is it registered as sports entertainment or... Sports. Like the league. is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been the same. You, you've you been playing with the same rules for years. Hey, you're in good shape. I don't know what, I don't know what you're... That's you're a slippery slope. About. An unjust law is no law. Regardless Jeff, of you, how long it's been in place. for Roger Goodell and commissioners? No, because he makes millions of dollars. I've, I've gotten that comment before. They're like, they're like, oh, wow, but you aren't going to criticize Goodell anymore. I'm like... Uh, no, Goodell is filthy rich. If I made Goodell's money, I would not care. <laughs> I got the same thing with Surviving Barso when I was getting shit. They're like, ooh, but you don't criticize Jeff Probst anymore. I'm like, oh, the multi millionaire that lives on an island the whole year? I go, no, I, I, it's a different thing, I think. Oh, by the way, Jeff, I've been watching Survivor recently. I've uh, I've so watched, good. I think, four seasons of it so far. Would you come back again if you were if you were asked to come back and do it again? Yeah, definitely. Like, it's a very cool show. I not like my call, by the way. That's Dave's call. I like it a lot. So if I think I don't even know if I'm hosting, I I hope I'm hosting. I would love to. Can you answer me this? What's up with Jeff? It's Jeff Probst, right? Probst, yeah. What's What's up with him when they they start a challenge and he holds his one hand up and then he goes ready go and then he raises his other hand. I was ready. I try not to do that because I don't want to copy him too much because he is the goat. I've actually never really never seen anything bad about Jeff Probst. Goodell's a different story. Um, I don't know. Just that's like his signature thing. It's very weird. He's got and great quote, immunity back up for grabs. Like he's got, you know, <laughs> yeah. he just, he's, he's, playing he's, for? he's the best. He is the, he is the best at that by far. Some might say that the guy, uh, Phil Keegan, the guy who does 
Amazing Race is also great. He's good, but Probst is Probst is awesome. I like when Probst shows up and and the survivors have eaten all their food and they're dying. They're like literally dying because they don't have any nutrients going to their bodies. And Jeff's like, "You guys didn't manage your food very well." And I gotta. And I gotta. <laughs> I also. I I, I, gotta... I do crack up at. I'm watching a lot of Survivor right now too, because I guess we're gonna do the new season. They talked about it on the unnamed show. Um, and even if I again, I don't know if I'm hosting. I think I am. Um, but I'm going to produce, help produce no matter what again, because I love coming up with challenges. I've been watching a lot lately, but I do, I do love the more I watch how insane it is that someone could not eat food for 20 days and then just pound like coffee and cake and they must shit their brains out. Yeah. Yeah. There was oh. one dude that was, he, he got like cowboy stew after not having anything at all to eat. And then he's like, yeah, I, I shit myself directly afterwards. And then I went back <laughs> for seconds crazy. and I shit myself again. Then I had thirds and I pooped more. But yeah, Jeff will be like, you guys didn't do a good job managing your food supply <laughs> at all. And I have this big ass sack of rice here that I'm willing to give you. And their their bodies are wasting away. They're all skin and bones, all ribs. And Jeff's like, but I'm going to need you to give me your shelter for it. And then he just <laughs> fucks them over on the other end. Dude, it's actually crazy how long the human body can survive without food, depending on your fat stores. Yeah, if you have if you have water, water's the big one. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's one guy who went like four years without food, who's like a four hundred pounder, and he survived. And then, uh, who was it recently? Um, but like you can routinely survive a month without food, and just get hacked. It was the NFL lineman offensive lineman who retired he was like yeah i fasted for two months and dropped all my nfl weight i'm gonna guess just on vibes russell okung i think so actually yeah he seems he seems like a he seems like a biohacker look it up he's a guy he got all his salary in bitcoin one year yep it was him yep okay russell yep. Okung. he dropped another 50 pounds in post nfl metamorphosis uh long-term water only fasting and he went on a 40 day water diet after losing a hundred pounds in April. That seems insane. That seems very bad for your body. But like, think about it. Like people, like humans evolved to do that. Other animals can't go that long without food. I mean, a lot of animals do though, like snakes. Hey, you could go 30 days eating just McDonald's. Yeah. There's no other animal that can do that. I'd say mammals, like s several weeks or even a couple months. But like, how long can a cow? Yeah, the, uh, the ones that like graze all day. Yeah, go without I, food. I also but, feel bad. You know what? I I feel bad for dogs. I might have mentioned this on the show before, but dogs they only drink water. Dogs never get any soda. They never get any liquid with, fla with true. flavor in it. It's just water. That's very well, true, PFD. They don't know the difference. They don't know the difference. But like, why not? <laughs> why can't a dog? Oh yeah, it's, that's when we're talking about like the the cans of of dog broth or dog beer. You remember that yep. big tea? That oh, you, that were oh yeah, thirteen bucks a can. Thirteen bucks a can. Give your dog like bone broth for a meal. <laughs> I just make soup with Blake's food and give it to him, and he loves that. I mean, there is a. Uh... Whoa, what were we talking? About? There was. The bone broth, if you give a dog beer, right, real beer, like it can cause seizures. And it happened to a frat house puppy once. Did you see that on TikTok? No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's this dog that was being raised in a frat house and it drank too much beer and died. Yeah, it's definitely not good for them. Yeah, definitely don't. You shouldn't give your dog beer. Don't give your dog beer. Uh, all right, well, thank you, Jeff, once again. Anything else you'd like to say, plug, do? No, I guess just watch the dozen. Watch the dozen. A couple Tune months, like ten, 10 weeks left in the regular season. So I have to write that song. I actually talked to Nick and do. KB. I'm, I'm uh, going to try my hand at doing the Sunday People have asked me, they said, hey, we have the Sunday night matches. We want a song, and I said, there's only one person <laughs> for that job. All right, so I'll get to work on that. I'm on it. All right, thank you guys oh. for listening. Check Love out Last Chance Uganda. It's live. The yes. second half of the mid-season. The, the mid-season premiere is uh, live right now on Donnie Does. Uh, should be a good one. We go back to Africa. East Africa. Love it. All right. See you guys. Oh, also tonight, Borelli's Registered Republicans in New York 3rd District. Please go. Love you guys.